I have a pretty good job, a loving wife, and two beautiful boys. I love to spend time with my family. My parents live close by, and we get together often for family dinners or gatherings. The day of the incident, I had been at work all day doing some remodeling on an old building downtown. The project was near completion, so I was finishing up, cleaning up before heading out. At about 7.30 in the evening, I jumped in my truck to head home. My office is only about five minutes from our house. It is completely dark outside at this point, but the city was alive with holiday lights and traffic. It's very rare that you can see stars here in El Paso. It's always so bright. I usually drive home along the route that passes through downtown. It provides an excellent view of the night sky as long as you look up. I never let my eyes wander to the side or down, especially when there are cars around me. I am always prepared for somebody to run a red light and strike me. So anyway, on this particular evening, I had just passed by the convention center and was heading down Paisano Drive. The traffic on my side of the road at this point was non-existent. There were no streetlights either. As soon as I was past Myrtle Street, I noticed something on the sidewalk about 15 yards ahead of me. It's worth noting that throughout all of this sighting, my truck was still in overdrive and the engine was running. I call it overdrive because I like to think my truck was cool, but really, it was just in drive. So I slowed down to get a better look at whatever it was. There was no other cars on the road at this point, but there was streetlights illuminating the area. The object was laying in a fetal position in a small alcove formed by a wall that bordered a building on my right and a closed business on my left. As I approached it, I noticed that it looked like one of those zombie characters from Dawn of the Dead. Torn clothes and dirty skin, dead-looking eyes. But this thing wasn't moving, so it must have just been someone intoxicated or maybe asleep. I don't know. As I passed by the alcove for about 5-10 to ten yards away from it, there was a small metallic object lying on the ground next to it. It looked like a shiny bent nail or something, and I was going to stop and take a look. But as soon as my headlights hit the thing in the alcove, its arms shot up, almost into a perfect 90 degree angle. I was shocked, and began to quickly run out towards my car. I could see pretty quick that this wasn't a human being, like I initially thought. There was actually dead flesh coming off of this person's or thing's body. Its ribcage being exposed, and part of its face was missing and it looked a lot more animalistic than I had ever envisioned. Its face was actually much more elongated, and had sort of a snout, while its legs were actually hawked like that of a dog's, but it wasn't feline or canid. I don't know what this was, but it scared me, and so I moved really fast to get out of sight, because I knew as soon if I stopped, it would have got inside the car, as it was heading straight for my driver's side door. That's all for this story. I am a 20-year-old American college student who's currently residing in Spain. I've been in Spain for about six months and have already had two experiences with what I believe to be the paranormal. One in particular was very similar to an experience posted. My girlfriend, her mother, and I were returning when we decided that it would be best if we took a day to Ronda. Ronda is known to be one of the most beautiful cities in all of Europe, and it's certainly worth a visit. We made our way across the mountainous region, and all through the Spanish countryside. We arrived. We parked where my girlfriend's mom usually parks, and began to explore the city. The great thing about it here is it's a very small city. You can explore a lot of the architecture and other points of interest in only a couple hours. After walking around a bit, we decided to make our way towards the bridge, but as soon as I looked at the bridge, I froze solid. The first word that popped into my head was demon. What stood was not human. It looked to be on two legs and had appeared to be wings folded against its back. My stomach dropped out from under me, and I felt an intense feeling of dread washing over my body. This wasn't your typical look at that scary creature moment. This thing scared me, down to my very core. I didn't have one ounce of courage in me, just 
intense fear. My girlfriend and her mother hadn't seen it yet. They were still a couple hundred feet away. Although, I did try to point it out to them. But the second they looked its way, it took off straight up into the sky, flying back over the mountains that we had driven through on our way there. Needless to say, we immediately got out of there, or I got us out of there, traveled back home that day because none of us felt safe remaining in the city after what happened. I do not know what this thing was or why it was standing outside Rhonda's Bridge, but I'll never go back to that city again. Even ever since then, my girlfriend has refused to speak to me about it. It's just not been the same. She's even been acting weird ever since I took her, as if she isn't happy or used to being around me anymore. I need help. Please tell me what I saw wasn't a demon or any other kind of monster. Try as I might, my mind keeps going back to that thing standing on the bridge and what it could have possibly been doing there. Or worse, what it would have done to me had I not seen it. I'm a pretty ordinary girl, 19 years old at the time of the sighting. I have lived in the same place my whole life and have never seen anything strange. It was Halloween night, 2012. I was out with my friends at the time, trick-or-treating. It was just about 8.30, and we had just finished up for the day. We were going home. We decided to take a shortcut through this one neighborhood. There was nobody there, and the streetlights were far and few between. We always took the shortcut. There would be less people around and less cars. We were walking down the road, about halfway through this neighborhood, and we all noticed it. There was a weird, really tall figure standing on top of this hill that you could clearly see from the road. Now, normally, I might not have thought anything of it, since it's Halloween and all, but there was something really off. First off, it was perfectly still. I couldn't see it breathing or swaying in the breeze like normal people do, just perfectly still, like a statue. Also, every time I looked directly at it, my eyes would water up for some reason, so I had to keep them at an angle to look at it, which made everything else blurry. I took out my phone, which is something I wish I hadn't done, pressed record and pointed it towards the figure. When I tried to zoom in, it had this weird glitch, and the phone shut off, even though my battery was at 81%. I turned it back on, only to find out that the video did not record anything. The figure definitely looked human, but it just felt wrong. It was too tall and too white. Not a normal person. Like a pale, dead kind of white. I did not see a face or eyes or mouth from the zoom-in, or what little I did see. We all kind of just stared at it, until we couldn't anymore. All of our eyes began watering so bad. And finally, one of my friends said, Let's get out of here. And we booked it home. When we got home, my friend, who was actually in the video, went down to her house so she could show it off to her mom. Her mom is really into ghosts and that kind of stuff, so she watched the video with us before trying to upload it to YouTube, only to find the app would not work. We were planning it on uploading it anyway, but we went back up there a few days later, and when we got home, I opened up my laptop to try and upload it again, only to find out the USB ports had stopped working. As far as I know, nobody has seen this thing that night. What do you think? Have you ever heard about anything like this? Have you had any thoughts or opinions? I would love to get some feedback from anybody. You can call me Greg. I'm a student in a field of wildlife biology and conservation. I love anything outdoorsy or sci-fi related. This encounter occurs towards the end of summer, when I was only 16 years old. It happened off a trail deep in the Apache National Forest here in northern Arizona, approximately two hours away from Flagstaff by car. My friends and I had just finished a nine-mile hike. Yes, we were that fit at that age. And the wilderness was thick. Lots of energy. We had finally found a good spot with our camping gear to set up camp. I think we were planning on doing some stargazing. I can't remember. We arrived at our destination around sunset, 
which was right around 8 p.m., if I'm remembering correctly. And there were three tents set up, with all of our sleeping bags laid out, ready for us. A cooler, albeit small, and a healthy fire. I was sitting on a log at the outskirts of our camp, just listening to my friend A playing acoustic guitar, while another kid from our school was setting up his rifle for some much-needed target practice. I remember looking over towards my other friend, who was sitting in front of him, and all of a sudden, this huge bright orange light appears, almost blinding us. The first thing that pops into my head was a UFO. I quickly laid flat down on my stomach, staring at it, while all my friends are looking puzzled. It had this aura around it that never seemed to dissipate and seemed very low, almost near the tree line. It was absolutely silent, and I could see it getting closer, so I got up to my feet and began walking towards it. Because my curiosity kind of just overcame me, my friends yelled at me, asking what I was doing. As soon as they said that, this orange light glowed even brighter, making everybody squint in pain. We were all looking away after that point, trying to cover our eyes, still in pain. Now, for this part, I remember very clearly. Once the light had dimmed down, somewhat, we looked up and saw a figure crouching on top of one of the top pine trees, surrounding our camp, directly at us, with his arms outstretched like he wanted to give everybody a welcoming hug. Now remember, this was pretty dark. There was no moon in the sky. The only light given off by the fire were the hot embers and the flames, and, of course, using our flashlights and phones were providing us enough visibility to vaguely see what we were doing, but not much else. I think where the figure was crouching on looked like a large, huge branch of a pine tree. He held his gaze for probably about 30 seconds before disappearing. We all got up and ran inside the tents. Even though it made us look like we were panicking, we just stayed in there until we couldn't see him anymore and waited for another hour before going back outside again to put more wood on the fire, and continue with our just camping trip. I don't really want to go into detail about the long story, but the short story is we went on for three days straight, every night, except the last one where he didn't show up quite as bright. Although he still showed up, his presence made everybody agitated and quite moody. It was very, very strange. Now, about a week later, my friend's mom who knows that I came along with them told them that she had heard some hikers passing by our camp that also saw the figure in the distance, this white, glowing, almost bioluminescent humanoid. They said it also had yellow glowing eyes. I've seen many people post about the same thing before, but nobody seems to know anything about it. It was not a bear, or any other animal that we could think of. My friend even tried shooting at it with his rifle, but the bolts did nothing and the fact that it was there in the first place was unnerving. I could go on about quite a lot of details, but I'll keep this short for now. There have been quite a few other encounters with this thing in the weeks after, but I'll end this here. This is my first time posting, so hopefully nobody gives me crap about that. Thank you for listening to my story. I've had a fair amount of experiences with the paranormal, but... I don't know if I'm quite ready to call myself agnostic as of yet. I was walking around my neighborhood. Well, let's be honest. It's not like anyone is trying to steal anything. The worst crime you can expect is just some vandalism or people stealing your trash cans out of spite. So anyway, I was walking around and somehow ended up back behind one of the houses, towards where I knew there were some woods and farmland. Now this woods and farmland spanned for miles and miles. It was also dark at this point and was about midnight. This was right on Halloween night as well. I walked down this old gravel road to the edge of this area, and just as expected, there was a dirt path leading into the woods that I could barely see. This is just from my memory. At first, I decided to just stand still, listening for any noises. I thought it would be pretty cool to find some creature hanging out in these woods on Halloween night. I heard nothing, though, for about ten minutes, but then I decided to finally walk into the wilderness. It was very creepy, walking through this old abandoned farmland with absolutely zero light. The only thing keeping me from being completely blind walking in there was my cell phone flashlight turned on. 
I had it on the lowest setting, so that way my surrounding wouldn't be completely pitch black. So far, it wasn't anything too scary, except for the fact that all these weird noises were coming out of nowhere, echoing throughout the whole trees and area. I'm not talking about the usual crickets or owls either. I mean stuff like weird crunching noises and what sounded like bone snapping. It was very bizarre. Anyway, I had been walking for about 10 minutes or so and made it to this point where there looked like there were several pathways you could follow through the forest. It kind of reminded me of one of those adventure games with mazes. Max Payne, for example. So I walked on the first path and ended up back on the gravel road after a little bit. Then decided to try another path, but eventually I got lost. After realizing that my phone battery would probably not last very long, after being on the flashlight setting the entire time, I checked my phone's GP settings to see which direction I needed to go in, so I could get out of there without getting too lost. I turned off the flashlight, turned on my phone's GPS, followed it to what looked like a road or something. As I'm walking towards it, I see all these leaves and sticks rustling around me, as if something had just ran past very quickly. It even got near to this point. Whatever it was sounded like it was trying to mimic my footsteps. Now, does that sound familiar? I'm not sure that's the first time someone has heard that before. Anyway, so I'm now paranoid, and I'm walking down this road for about another 10 minutes before I come across yet another dirt path. I didn't care how much longer it take me to get out of there. If anything, it'd be better than being stuck here. I proceeded down this path, and eventually... I start to see a little bit of light between the trees, which meant that I was getting closer to an opening. So at that point, I just ran out of there, because I knew whatever it was had to be safer than being in there for the next 30 minutes. As I began to run, I hear this deep, guttural growl from behind me, and I hear something running fast behind me on two legs. I didn't dare turn around to look. I just ran. It turns out, I got out of there by going through another residential neighborhood's backyard and over a fence, never once looking behind me. There was definitely something there. I was not alone. It's a night I'll never forget. It scared me. I'm an amateur cryptozoologist, which you can probably tell from my post. I do not hold any degrees in anything remotely related to the paranormal or cryptozoology but I am currently working on getting into graduate school. I recently had a sighting that has shaken me to my core. Today was absolute hell. Let me give you some information. As many of you know, today, myself and a fellow cryptozoologist have been obsessively searching for Bigfoot through heavily wooded areas along the border of Oklahoma. We had searched at least 10 times in various locations. We always came up empty. Today, however, would be much different. This day, in 2013, our first stop was around noon. Venturing into Arkansas, specifically into the Ozark Mountains National Forest. We were driving on some winding roads, and we came across an area called Bear Hollow Lake. There, we saw two deer running away from us. We got out of our car and walked towards them. They're normally pretty shy creatures. They ran away pretty quickly. Or so I thought. As I looked back towards the car, I saw one of them staring. It had a very piercing glare in its eyes, and I'm not usually afraid of deer. But this deer, or should I say, this pair of deer, looked different. There was just something about them I can sense that was strange. Something about it just did not feel right deep down. We kept walking after that. We actually ended up hiking up the mountain for roughly an hour or two, and we finally began to hear what sounded like a creek running along with some leaves rustling in the breeze. Since we're both somewhat experienced hikers, we knew that it was commonplace for sounds like this to be heard all around these woods. At this point, it seemed like hours had passed and nothing was happening. Eventually, my friend decided that he wanted to take a break, and spend time at the lookout points in the path. But something told me to stop, and I'm really glad I didn't. Instead, I kept moving. 
I began getting this strange feeling. We're not alone. I don't know what it was, or who was around us, but we were not alone. I told my friend we should keep moving, keep pressing forward. He reluctantly agreed, and stopped at all the waypoints. We decided to continue on through the trail, and make our way back down to the vehicle. There's something about this presence around us. It just did not feel warm and inviting. We did not feel safe by any stretch of the means. And as we made haste back to the vehicle, the feelings of being unsafe kept intensifying over and over. Fortunately, we made it back to the vehicle, safe and sound. But one thing I found that was very odd, by the time we got back to the car, the entire forest was completely silent. When we got out before, you could hear the creak, even from the distance we were away. But now, everything was quiet. It was so eerie, and along with the deafening silence was this eerie presence. It was so thick in the air, you can cut it with a knife. It was a complete and total change in atmosphere. And this is where my story ends. While I didn't end up seeing anything, I felt it. It was terrifying. I can only imagine what was up there with us. I'm surprised it didn't show itself. But maybe, for my sanity, it's probably for the better. I don't like driving at night. I can't see very well. Because of this, I usually use the high beams or just try to avoid night driving altogether. But nights like this, I didn't have much of a choice. After about 45 minutes of driving in darkness, with barely any streetlights, the full moon lighting the areas in my high beams, I was still and already apprehensive. No cars on the road but me. Ah, uh, that made it a lot worse. So, I'm slowly driving, deathly afraid of some dead man's curve or something. All it takes is a deer to just jump out, and my car is done. And like I said, I'm pretty fearful of night driving. I'm always worried. I just drive around a deer if it does jump. And of course, something like this happens to me. Just on the left side, or should I say the passenger side, this thing that I'll call it ran on two legs, but had a gate that made it look like it was on four. It was also not far away. Driving by, I could see that the arms were thin and reached far below its knees. The head wasn't very large. That's what I remember. It was kind of a bluish green and scaly. And I saw enough to get a profile. And as soon as I did, I veered sharply into the woods. The sighting of this thing made me physically ill. I was sick to my stomach. I got home told my wife, went to bed, and decided, I'm going to take the long way from now on. I used to work about 20 miles away from where I lived. One evening, I had been stuck in traffic. I was on my way home from work at the time. I had a very long day, and I was just ready to be home at this point. I was about to turn onto an upcoming street when another car pulled out, burning rubber, and left the scene. I shrugged it off as the driver wanting to get home or get somewhere, but as soon as he went around me, I saw what had gotten him in such a rush to leave. This thing was massive and black, shaped like a human, but it was hard to tell because it was night out, but I see this giant silhouette just running right by. It made no noise whatsoever, but it scared the crap out of me. I think it could have been a Bigfoot, but... I don't know. To this day, I still do not know what it could have been. I'm very curious and would love to hear what you think it could have been. The other driver in front of me saw it, though, which spooked the hell out of him. It caused him to floor it and turn down the road. Who knows what this really was. During the nighttime, all around my house, I had been hearing all these strange noises and sounds. So one night... I went out to go check things out, because I heard something I never had before. As I approached the end of my driveway, where it meets the country road, there was a sidewalk, about three to four feet long, and nothing but farmland on both sides of the road. This went on continuously, until you hit very thick bush. So, 
I walked towards the sidewalk, and I saw movement from what appeared to be an animal from not far away. As I got closer, I realized this was not an animal at all, because it was standing up. The sighting of this alone terrified me. It let out this scream, a sound and mixture between a woman screaming and a horse neighing. It bolted, running into the tree line, back over where my house is, about a hundred yards deep into the wooded area, deep behind my house. There is a lot of history surrounding this area. It is, after all, a very old native settlement. There have been numerous sightings in the past, which I knew nothing about, until now. There was also recently a sighting by my next-door neighbor. Well, more like a mile away neighbor. She had described what sounded like the same creature I saw. The only difference here is that she says its face clearly resembled more of a man than a wolf. I think what I saw is known as a werewolf. It was pretty tall, around eight to nine feet, standing upright. Its skin was more grayish, though, and its eyes were more sunken in. It looked starved, actually. Very lean. Really, I don't know what it was, but I know that what I saw is terrifying, and I never want to see it anymore. I'm going to be heavily equipped if it's around here again. It won't give the chance to run away next time. I'll make sure of that. Looking back in hindsight at this account, I believe that we had been stalked the entire time, but that is just mere speculation. One morning, my father and I had gone fishing in a very remote section of the Ozark Mountains. We were all by ourselves. We saw something that was very strange. It quickly crossed from one side of the trail to the other, so fast it could not be seen after it went crossing. It was roughly only 9 a.m. when this happened, but the entire morning we could not shake the feeling that something large was following us, and I believe this was the creature. There's been days where I've been terrified to go back to those mountains alone, ever since, due to what we saw that day. And I could sit here and tell you that werewolves exist, because what we saw looked exactly like the creatures from the movie The Howling, but I'm not really sure what it was. The rest of the day was very on edge. Lots of anxiety. There ain't much else to add to this. We finished our day of fishing, and that was pretty much it. Although I'm pretty sure that thing was lingering near the entire time. I'm just glad it never showed itself another time. I don't think I would have been able to handle that, personally. The following is a true account of what this woman experienced. Though no proper name has been given to provide further identification, she will be referred to as Lauren. When Lauren was 14, she was hunting with her grandfather and her cousin. It was late morning. They were walking along one of the trails where Lauren's grandfather often went hunting on. They had already been walking for a couple of hours without any luck or sightings when this particular encounter had taken place. The first thing that alerted her to something being out of the ordinary was her dog was acting very skittish. Her dog's name was Tina, a golden Labrador, always very calm, lax, and reliable. But as they continued up the trail, they began to smell what she described as wet dog mixed with garbage on a hot summer day. The smell became more intense and pungent the farther they walked, until eventually it became so strong Lauren could no longer ignore it and turn to face whatever it was, demanding it show itself. Before she could turn all the way around, she would refer to as Bigfoot was suddenly standing there next to a tree. It was no higher than her waist. The Bigfoot briefly glanced at Lauren before crossing onto the other side of the trail, disappearing into the tall grass. The sighting was over in a matter of seconds, but Lauren remembers feeling paralyzed with fear and what seemed like an eternity. However, once Lauren came to her senses, she ran past Tina, who had been hiding behind Lauren the entire time, and attempted to get away from whatever it was as fast as she could. In an attempt to get a better look, she stopped, turned around, and aimed, considering this thing was still right there in the trees. But, because she did not have a clear shot, she did not take it, and had a fear of wasting a bullet on a creature she knew nothing about. 
realizing how useless her firearm was at such close proximity. She quickly set it down, and pulled out the hunting knife she had strapped to her belt. She was fumbling with the clasp on her belt, and it became clear that the Bigfoot had already gotten away from her. The creature never reappeared to Lorne. Although completely terrified, it has not stopped her from going back out hiking many times since then. She still lives with this encounter, and claims to be a lot more aware of her surroundings. I walked towards a trail, towards my destination. I began to hear some very strange noises that I was not familiar with. They were coming from behind a tall pine tree, about five to six feet off the ground. Well, it was then that I came face to face with one of those little gray aliens. You know, with the head being really long and large. I freaked, running back towards my grandma's house. I told her about the little gray alien that I saw face to face in the trail. After about 15 minutes or so, she made me go back up on the same trail to see if I can find his tracks for proof of what I had just seen. She really didn't believe me. Well, about four hours later, after looking for whatever I thought was an alien, well, I still found nothing. But I know what I saw to this day, and it was right there, right in front of me. So close, you could reach out and touch it. The only thing is, is nobody believes me. I just want everyone to know that they are real. And if you see one for sure, don't be alone. If anything, make sure you try to get a picture of it if you can. I had been hiking off in the mountains for quite some time at this point, and I had just set up camp. One thing I found quite interesting, though, was how the weather seemed to be more stormy than usual. Between all the water, wetness, and rain, I pressed on like usual, making my camp and getting comfortable. The following morning, I packed up on my next destination on the mountain. Just a very short ways into my trek, I spotted something far off on the back side of the land. Down below me was a clearing, probably at several hundred yards across. I witnessed a large, dark figure that appeared to have horns on its head, roughly about 40 to 50 meters out. It came out into the clearing from the wood line and kind of just stood there, as if checking its surroundings. Its movements were strange, kind of like that of a bird. It appeared to kneel down on the ground and pick something up, although from the distance I was at, I couldn't exactly make out what it was. But it looked just like a man, except the horns and it being very, very dark. I'd say it was probably completely black. Once it picked something up, it stayed still, and then walked off casually on the other side of the forest. To this day, I'm not exactly sure what I saw, but... It was very, very strange. I hope it was nothing paranormal. Two thousand ten, Ontario. I was about fifteen when I had a very bizarre experience in the wooded area, right near our house in a small town in Canada. I was up late with some friends. We were just sitting out in the backyard, playing truth or dare, if I remember right. This one boy who lived around the block from me said he was going to go for a walk, since none of us wanted to play anymore. No big deal, right? So, he took off into the woods by his house. My friend dared me to follow him, without being detected. No problem, I thought at first. I have always thought myself to be a very stealthy person, so sneaking was not tough for me. After all, he was just a little kid, walking through there alone at night. I was about to follow him, and all of a sudden my friend says, Where is he? I can't see him. The rest of the people who were sitting around us just looked up at me, and were all like, What do you mean? Where did he go? I felt uneasy. Not only had the boy vanished from sight, but from sound as well. Anyway, being fifteen and slightly stupid, I brushed this off as us playing a practical joke, until I really thought about it for a second. They honestly couldn't see or hear him walking through the forest. Now, you had to remember that we could easily hear this kid walking towards us before we saw him. So why would we suddenly not be able to hear him now? I decided to take a peek to see what was going on. I walked slowly into the woods, trying not to make a sound against my better judgment. As soon as I passed the first few trees, I saw him 
still walking with his back towards me, about 30 feet away. It kind of looked like he had stopped for a second, but it did not really make sense. I stopped right there, and because when my legs refused to carry me any further, looking at his back, you could tell something just wasn't right. He looked hunched over, and you could not see his arms or shoulders moving up or down, indicating any movement, besides a slight shifting side to side. It made no sense what we were looking at. I mean, let's be realistic here. My friend was still standing in the exact same spot he started at, staring into the woods almost dumbfounded. He could not have walked that far already. I stood there for what felt like eternity, trying to convince myself this was all just some dream, until I heard swooshing sounds coming, and it stopped about five feet behind me. When I turned around to face it, there was nothing there. Only trees. It was this energy that came up behind me that I can't quite explain. It was a feeling very much similar to pins and needles. I looked up from looking back down. He was gone. Completely vanished. I felt this strange sensation come over me. Like I was in danger. I ran back to my friends. I told them what had happened. They didn't believe me. They kind of just laughed at me. One of them also said he probably just ran home. But the next couple days, the mom had begun talking to us, asking where her boy went. He never did return home. And to this day, none of us, even as adults, know whatever happened to him. I was driving up Highway 64 to Cherokee from Brevard. I was planning on meeting my wife for dinner. I had just crossed into Swain County, North Carolina and came upon a very bright full moon over the highway. There are no streetlights where I'm driving, so it is dark out there. As I crested a hill at approximately mile marker 266 or 267, I noticed what looked like a human walking through the road quickly to the woods on the other side. It was moving very fast. I can't say, but faster than you would expect any adult to walk across a highway let alone the fact that there's actually somebody walking across the highway. As soon as I looked to my right, this thing ran off the road into the woods. It was very dark. I could not see any details about this thing. It also stood like a person. I thought it was a man. But it seemed much larger. I want to say it was a person, but I just got a really bad feeling after watching it. Something about the whole thing just did not sit right in my stomach. On Sunday evening, April 2012, friends and family members Dana and Jordan were fishing along the Conestoga Creek behind the Red Rose Inn near Intercourse, Pennsylvania, right around 6 to 7 p.m. They observed what they thought was a strange animal walking alongside the edge of the creek. Rocco and White followed it in their car for a short time, at which they had to stop due to a traffic congestion. They continued, however, on foot. They proceeded upstream, walking towards the west until they reached an unused bridge, which used to span the Conestoga Creek before it got knocked out in a recent hurricane. Rocco described the humanoid as having scaly, wrinkly skin, a dark brown and green colored. She further elaborated saying that it had webbed feet and that it looked slightly deformed looking. It also had a long tail and a very reptile-like head. She described the face as fish-like, having a very pronounced upper jaw. She said it kind of reminded her of the creature from the Black Lagoon, crossed with an alien. She also stated she could clearly see the webbing at the base of its legs and feet. White, too, described the creature as having green scaly skin, long limbs ending in clawed hands, teeth like those of a shark, and large piercing black eyes. He was most intimidated by the sighting. I'm a 23-year-old male from Nebraska. I'm a college student studying criminal justice and corrections. The other night, I had a sighting of what I believe was a flying humanoid near Jacksonville, Florida. It was about 10.35 p.m. on a Friday night, November 17, 2017. 
It occurred while me and two friends were driving back from going to go eat at Buffalo Wild Wings. Here's what happened. My friend in the front passenger seat saw something flying over us while we were driving. He pointed upwards and said, What is that? We all looked up to see a figure moving very quickly across the sky right above our car. It could be described as a bat or gargoyle-like in form, but with wings that seemed more like skin stretched between its bones rather than skeletal wings. And more specifically, it seemed to be about five feet wide in total wingspan, with a small body attached to the back of it, looking humanoid in form, except for its bat-like wings and skin, the way it was stretched over its small bones. It moved extremely fast and flew behind one of the buildings across the street from right where we were driving. There was no sound at all coming from the flying humanoid while it passed over us. When I saw it fly behind the building, that was it. I freaked. Right afterwards, my friends shouted loudly, What the heck was that thing? I replied immediately by saying, I don't know, but whatever it was, flies just like Superman. They asked me what I meant, so I told them what I thought it looked like, that its wings looked like they were made of stretched skin. Then, we all just continued to watch the sky for a few seconds after, and what we saw then, my friend in the passenger seat shouted, There it is again! We all quickly looked to see it flying across many of the rooftops. Just then, it seemed to be moving towards our car, so I started braking hard, pulling over to stop on the side of the road. I knew braking ahead of time would not have been fast enough if it decided to attack our vehicle. Its size was small enough, but I'm sure it proved deadly. Some people might think this was a bat, but I know what a bat looks like, and this was much larger than a bat. Plus, it moved fast enough that if it got stopped in time, there's no way my car would have been able to stop immediately without killing me or breaking something on my vehicle. Not only that, but its body was shaped differently than a bat's body, and it had obvious legs and arms. I've traveled a lot and seen a lot of different things, but I'm at a loss for words to describe this creature's appearance. It was definitely not normal. It looked like an alien that ventured far from its craft. It would have been carrying something either for protection navigation, or possibly collecting samples. There were no cars coming towards us luckily. We pulled over, stopped on the side of the road, so we got out of the car to look up where we last saw this thing flying. We stood there looking around. After about 30 seconds, we all started shouting excitedly. It flew behind that building. Then we noticed other people beginning to come outside. They too saw it. Now people are shouting, alien, alien, look, there it is. Now at this point, we're beginning to attract a lot of attention. Clearly, we're not the only ones to have seen this. But after this, things did calm down eventually, because we lost sight of it. But we could not stop talking about it the rest of the night. Even about the 20 people that witnessed this thing along with us. There was definitely something in the sky that night. What it was, I'm not sure. Have you ever seen the movie Army of Darkness? Well, if you have, you might remember towards the end of that movie, where this winged flying demon comes down and grabs the girl, takes her away. I'm not saying that's what it looked like, like a flying little imp demon, but it really reminded me of it, the same body. That's all for now. I grew up in a small town in rural North Carolina. I've been camping almost my entire life. I've also been an avid outdoorsman, including hunting. In fact, I started hunting with my old man at five years old, so I'm not one to really get scared of anything by nature or wildlife. However, one day, me and a couple of friends were going through a swampy area. We had to take a boat across at night to get to my friend's house one summer. It was around two in the morning. We reached the other side, but decided we wanted to hang out for a bit. So we stood there on the bank, smoking cigarettes. Bad mistake. After about 15 minutes of this, roughly a seven-foot-tall creature comes out of the woods behind us to our left, 
walks right past us into the swamp on our side. It was definitely not human. At the angle we were at in the brush, it did not see us, but we saw it. It was about seven feet tall, had a very pointed head that kind of came to a tapered point at the top, no hair. It was extremely broad and bulky. It only had one arm, or so what we can tell. The other appeared to be withered or rotted away, and its skin was a dark green grayish color, very leathery looking. It reminded me of the swamp thing. Its legs were also very long and muscular, but its feet were odd. Its eyes seemed to have this glow as we watched it walk past us on the bank before disappearing into the swamp on our side. We were spooked. I've told my friends about what we saw, the ones that weren't there. They think we were crazy. Now, after that, we never stopped on the embankment. In fact, we even stopped going through his house on the boat. What did we see? I was raised in Idaho, but I've lived at a state for several years now. My family has gone camping together up at the same spot every year after my grandmother moved to a retirement community nearby. This spot is very secluded. It's pretty much in the middle of nowhere up in northeastern Idaho. Here's my experience. This happened about six years ago. I can't remember exactly when, but it was during that time frame. We were staying in tents like normal. All four of us were awake one night at around midnight or so, and we all saw lights go by outside near our campsite. Maybe I figured there was a road nearby, but I realized, no, we were several miles away from any road. So where would these lights come from? My mom started freaking out. My dad began asking if it was a bear, and she said no. My mother was starting to freak out, convinced it was some sort of alien. We tried to go outside and look for the lights, but they were gone. But these lights were constant, and there were these large bright whites that would circle around our campsite every few minutes. The third time, we attempted this plan of action. My dad had his rifle in hand. We figured we were getting attacked by some sort of alien. But soon after the lights disappeared, and the entire atmosphere around us changed entirely. It felt in the air like the same way it does right before a storm. A lot of static filled up in the air. We're all out in our tent and campsite, thinking, what are we going to do? My parents are freaking out. My dad is ready to shoot anything that moves. And we all, in unison, hear this deep growl. Whatever this thing was, it didn't like us trying to get closer. And we immediately gave up on a plan of attack. My dad claims to have seen it, that whatever it was looked like a bear, but walked upright and had not much hair on its body. Basically, more smoother, dark brown skin, but still claimed it had very big claws and teeth, but not like a mangy bear. Something much else. Something far more human. The details are still kind of fuzzy, but that's what I remember. It's been years now, and I still think about this very frequently. So I've never heard anything else about similar encounters from anybody else around there. The only other people who have ever camped up at this spot are very secluded other couples who don't talk much with others. I have been back myself several times and it always feels very different up there. Like, at any given moment, something can happen. You feel you're not alone. I'm not going to disclose the exact location, but I will say it's just in northern Idaho. Oh, and my uncle on my mother's side did share with me the following story after I relate to him what my mother and I had experienced, along with my father. My uncle was out hunting for deer one day alone in the same general area where this experience occurred. He came across a wolf-like creature that was either eating a dead deer or killing something. He couldn't tell which. He didn't get close enough to see it completely, but even at his distance, he could tell its teeth were very long, like a saber-toothed tiger. It let out this unusual loud cry howl before fleeting off into the forest at a very unearthly fast pace. My uncle claims to have not felt any fear whatsoever until he made it back to our truck. He was just so taken out of reality, he describes, incapable of feeling any emotion because he was in such shock. The fear didn't come till afterwards. 
he found himself shaking uncontrollably. I've always thought about our family about how if they knew that the possibility of werewolves being out there, but I guess they just never knew or thought about it. He shot down the idea of it being a werewolf, but described it being a wolf that he's never seen before. And one more thing. It was also closer to winter. There was a lot of snow up there, so it's not like anything would be able to navigate and just roam around easily. We're talking about a large predator here navigating through all that snow, and quite easily. My thoughts? Well, for quite some time, I've tried to rationalize all of this, but I simply can't come up with anything plausible enough to sound remotely convincing. The whole thing is just far too bizarre. But one thing is for sure. That entire region has something going on with it. Whether it be evil, aliens, or monsters, I don't know. But I feel very apprehensive to even go back. So, this all started when my husband and I were at home. We live in the countryside. Getting ready to go out of town for a trip we had planned for nine months. I had my dogs outside with me in their kennel. I was getting ready to bring them in. They were barking up a storm. So I'm standing on the deck, looking around, trying to see what was freaking them out so much. Well, that's when I saw it. There was this huge creature looking at me from the tree line, about 40 yards away. It had its back to me at first, and then it turned to look at me. And all I could really see besides hair and eyes was just this massive silhouette. If there's one thing I know about dogs, they don't bark up a storm unless there's something really going on. So, I start yelling while backing up towards the door, and it looks at me intently. Now, because it stepped out more to the light, I could see its eyes and face clearly. It looked like a very malformed dog, with the most striking, terrifying eyes I've ever seen. But, instead of feeling terrifying fear, immediate sadness came over me, like the most depressed I've ever been in my life in that very moment. I have never been more sad or depressed in my entire life than in that one singular moment. It was this very bizarre response. And then, my fight or flight kicked in, and I go into survival mode. I was screaming inside, but trying to be very calm and not shake. I told my dogs to get inside. They were hiding behind me, shaking. I was obviously letting them get out of the kennel when I saw this thing. My husband, during all of this, hears the commotion outside, saw what was going on and ran out. He sees it, now yelling at it like it's some big animal to go away. The thing just takes off, turning away from us, going towards the other yard where the woods are. After about 10 minutes later, things kind of calmed down. The night sounds came back, because there were no crickets when I first went outside. And the dogs finally got settled down. My husband grabbed his gun, went outside looking for it, but it never returned that night. However, my dogs seemed very uneasy the rest of the evening, even though they were calmed down. They kept whining. I didn't sleep that much that night. Luckily, we didn't find anything more. I did post about this on Facebook, since my husband is still very skeptical of these kinds of things. It told me it was likely a bear or something. It could have been neither, but I disagree. The way it looked at me, the way it looked into my eyes, it had intelligence, and it looked evil, like no animal I'd ever seen before. Reddit, what do you think it was? This past summer, 2016, was when this all occurred. It's not something that crossed my mind until recently, and why I felt inspired to share it with you lovely people out there in the interwebs. Here we go. I was spending the night over at my grandparents' house due to a rare heat wave. My family does not have AC and could not afford even a decent fan. So yeah, I went over there to sleep. Everything is fine and dandy, and I should have been sleeping, but I was busy playing GameCube until around 3.30 a.m. Then, out of nowhere, the power just goes out, and I start hearing this strange noise outside. It sounded like somebody was walking through the woods and grumbling angrily very loudly. This persisted for about 15 minutes before it all finally stopped. I felt really bad. 
I didn't dare move an inch. And where I was, something told me not to. After a short amount of time, the power finally came back on. So I tried to ignore it, playing smash melee. The next day comes, and my grandparents go into town. But their car isn't running at the moment due to a dead battery. At least it died in town. So while I'm still at my grandparents' house, waiting to have them take me back, I begin to feel the strange feelings again. And this time, I look out the window. That was a huge mistake. Coming out towards the backyard was this very tall figure that I could say looked exactly like Nosferatu, but naked. It was very creepy looking, and it moved in a really spindly fashion, and then it quickly disappeared. Some sort of large white humanoid. I was freaked, immediately called my grandparents. They were in the middle of having somebody come replace the battery, since my grandfather's not a car guy. They were back home in about an hour and a half, where I demanded to be taken home. They did. I explained to them what I saw, and of course they shot me down. I explained it was probably just some coyote or something, since they do get them a lot out where they live. But come on, a coyote does not look like this. Anyway... I dealt with the heat wave for the rest of the time there. Anything was better than being close to that thing. I work in R&D for a large company. I've been an outdoorsy person my entire life. From early on, I've been camping and venturing out into the woods by myself from time to time. But ever since this happened, there's no way I'll ever be doing that again. Ever. I live in a small town in Louisiana. I grew up here. Lots of woods and bayous close by to explore. I used to go out pretty regularly to these areas for fun during my high school years or when I could get away from work. I've been working since I was the age of 16. I'd usually always bring my rifle or shotgun with me on my treks into the woods. I would always be worried about snakes or wild boar. I was raised to respect the outdoors and coexist with nature. So, I don't believe in killing something, unless it's for food. I have seen bears and boar while out on these adventures of mine, but they were both a safe distance away, so we just went our separate ways, and that was the end of that. Anyway. One evening last week, I was out of my backyard, shooting some cans of coffee off a fence. It wasn't late, but it was getting dark, as daylight saving times ends. The sun sets fast here during the winter months. Before I knew it, it's almost completely dark outside. I heard my neighbor's dog going crazy, but they bark most evenings anyway when the sun begins to set. My parents' dogs are out with me in the backyard, so I wasn't too worried. They're out here most of the time. I had brought my 22 rifle. And don't get me wrong. I know 22s aren't very good for self-defense against anything more than a raccoon, but it's all I had with me at the time. Out of nowhere, something large and black came running at me full speed in the woods, beyond up ahead. I thought it to be a very large man at first, and I thought it must be a big bear or maybe a boar advancing towards me. I turned, firing a shot into the ground to scare whatever it was running towards me. The thing stopped turned and bolted off like a bat out of hell in the opposite direction. I fired off yet another shot, but at an angle, so I would not hit if this thing was a bear. It ran off into the trees, and then all I heard after was silence and my parents' dogs barking up a storm. Whatever I shot at clearly had two legs. I could hear it. It sounded like a big person doing a marathon through the woods. I went back into my house and tried not to think too much of it. The next day, I was told by my neighbor, he lives only about 80 yards away from me, he had heard several shots being fired off from the woods the evening before. He even said his dog had ran off in the direction where I had fired at, at whatever it was running towards me. He also mentioned something else I found odd. He claimed during the day when they were out looking for their dog, there was this weird smell near where I shot at whatever it was that came charging through the woods. It smelled like rotten eggs with an undertone of sulfur. Very unusual, since most wild boar just smell like mud or wet grass to me. 
this encounter didn't necessarily scare me, but it sure as hell made me think twice about going out at night by myself. I've still been out in the woods during the day since then, just not at night. I posted this to see what you all thought. It might be nothing, but for my own peace of mind, I wanted to share it with somebody other than just my next-door neighbor. I don't know if you guys will think much of this, but if anything, hopefully somebody else out there has experienced something similar around their homes, or possibly while camping. I would love to hear your stories too. Thanks. Back in the early 1990s, when I was 19 or so, I worked nights, unloading trucks at actually a chain retail department store, back before they turned into superstores. It's where me and my best friend slash coworker would go for fun. It became our little secret place. Nobody ever went there, unless you had business at the store. The manager knew we were out there, but he never cared, as long as we came back in before our shift had ended. I can remember, it was hot that night. I can't recall what month, probably sometime in the summer. But I know the humidity was unbearable. So I'm standing outside of my car, on the side of the building, smoking a cigarette, and I notice this dark figure on top of an embankment. Keep in mind that this was around 2 a.m., so nothing's really open, except the store and some businesses nearby, which have been closed by now. This is quite possibly one of the more spooky things that have happened. I'm not sure if it is a werewolf, but what I saw is definitely uncanny and worth mentioning. I'll try and describe the creature as best as possible. Note that this was dark outside, so I only caught a glimpse of the thing. It looked like a large canine sitting on its hind legs or crouched down on its front legs, leaning in on its knuckles or elbows from what I could vaguely tell. Long story short, I never saw this thing again after that night, but my girlfriend, now wife, swears she has seen this same creature before. In my opinion, I think it looks a lot more like a werewolf, but that's just me. Those eyes do look dog-like, though. Any other opinions would be greatly appreciated at this point. I don't know what to believe. Thanks for reading. My family has lived outside of Abbeville for generations. We usually live by the White Bridge Road. My grandparents on my mother's side are actually buried behind our house. 50 feet away from their graves is the grave of a young woman who died in 1815 at the age of 19. She was not native to this area, and her body was brought here for intermittent because it was best known by the family that lived there then, which also happened to be relatives of hers. Her stone has a carving of a hand pointing into the ground, with a type of bat creature or angel hovering over it. The Native American tribe that were forced to walk the Trail of Tears passed right through this area. I have personally located old Indian campsites right near my property. There is a very dark history in Red River Parish. People have died here, a lot of them. I've been told that my great-great-grandfather actually came here from Europe, to settle for good with his family after coming over as an indentured servant to start a brand new life. My sister and her ex-husband bought the house, which sits directly behind mine on White Bridge Road, roughly 15 years ago. This is shortly after they moved in, is when I started seeing what appeared to be a huge black dog walking around on the front yard late at night. This would generally happen about every morning, 3 or 4 a.m., since I was a kid, actually. I was always a night owl, always suffering from insomnia as far back as I could remember. So for me, this was normal. But seeing this dog, well, not quite. We have a dog ourselves, but our dog is not an outside dog and whines when she's left alone at night. So I never thought anything of it too much until things really got weird. As time went on, the animal would come out only once every few months. But as time passed, people started seeing what appeared to be a large bat flying around my mom's house late at night, screeching loudly that they both woke from their sleep. At first, they just dismissed it as kids being stupid, thinking it was funny to make loud noises in order to scare old ladies, 
which did work most of the time. But they began hearing the sounds more frequently, and it sounded nothing like they had ever heard before. They both went outside to see what was making that noise, but never saw anything. I finally got my own place two years ago, and my sister, her ex-husband, and his girlfriend, and I move into this house out in the sticks on some dirt roads surrounded by farmland. We all pulled our money together, thinking we would be getting a nice big house for what we were paying monthly. The mortgage company just put us into an old fixed rubber, requiring hard labor to fix it up. So now, instead of four bedrooms, there are only two, plus an office slash library type room, built in with full bookshelves. I spend a lot of time here. The past weekend, I was over at my sister's house, helping her paint the exterior of the home, which has only been left with one coat of paint for probably about 20 years. It looks like crap. Also, there's this little shack out back nobody ever uses due to it being full of junk. It has not been used since we moved in. But recently, I found myself going out there to read or just relax or listen to music on my cell phone. If I'm trying to escape, then that's my go-to. So, as we're all painting and talking, we hear this loud screeching outside. Everybody stops dead in their tracks, and we see several large bats flying. But we're shocked at what we see. These aren't just large flying bats. These look like human-sized gargoyle flying demons. I'm talking the stereotypical kind you see perched on top of old Gothic city buildings. As if they had just come to life and flew off the rooftops. There's about four of these things, and they all seem to be headed in the same direction. I'd say no more than a hundred feet off the ground, given my poor estimates. A few seconds later, we hear their screeches echoing from the sky as they traveled across. We're all pretty shocked by what we're seeing, saying to each other, Did you see that? I think we were all pretty freaked. We stopped painting the rest of the day, going inside, worried if these things were going to return, although I'm not sure they would. I mean, I'm pretty sure they were just passing through, and hopefully did not see our house, but it still freaked me out. My sister is convinced that this was some sort of big bat, and really wants to blow the whole thing off. I think whatever it is, it's definitely not a bat. Bats don't look like this thing did. If so, it is the largest, most human-like bat I've ever seen. Personally, it looked more like a demon. I'm not sure what it was, but I know that's not something you see in the sky every day. That much I can tell you. My little sister is the only one out of my entire family that I could tell this to. This happened years ago, but thanks to the internet, I have been able to connect with others who have had similar experiences. It's hard enough admitting let alone trying to explain it to somebody else. First off, I'm currently 18, but this experience was when I was 15. I've always had an interest in cryptids and aliens growing up, since about the age of 8. When I was younger, my family would go camping just about every weekend, most times at a local campground with our cousins who were nearby. This is where my very first encounter starts. It was late at night, around 11 or 12 p.m., not quite dark out, but definitely getting there. At this point in time, we had already been camping for several days, just relaxing and enjoying nature for the sake of it. Either me or my cousins decided to venture back into the woods behind our campsite. This area stretched on for what seemed like miles. We didn't have any real flashlights, so for most of the walk, it was just pure, unadulterated darkness. As we ventured on, I began to hear something strange. It sounded like a whirring noise getting closer and closer. Being the naive youth that I was, I didn't think much of it at first. But as it grew louder, I realized with horror that whatever this thing was, its intentions were not pure, as if they are ever. The trees frantically waved back and forth as it approached, sounding almost mechanical in nature now. It gave off no colors, besides pure blackness, which seemed to leak out of itself, if that's easy to understand. 
all three of us completely petrified, sprint back to our campsite as fast as we could, all of us fearing for our lives. It was hot on our heels the entire way, but luckily, we made it back with no harm done to us. My cousins and I never spoke a word about it to the others. As the experience was so horrific, none of us really wanted to discuss it, forcing you to relive it. We were at a loss for words if nothing had ever happened in the first place. Brushing off the whole ordeal as maybe being tired from being outside too much or for too long. The following summer, I had just turned 16. I saw it again. This was in a different area though, and I don't think as terrifying. It had become almost comfortable with my presence at this point. I would see it every time we went camping that summer but never when we went in the winters or other times of the year. Now that I think about it, it might have been hunting me. Either way, we stopped going camping after my sister ended up graduating high school, moved to a new house not too far away from where we were living at that point in time. The reason why? To make an extremely long story short, I think truly it was hunting my sister, and it wanted something to do with her. Although I can't prove it, I just have a feeling. I lived in western Texas for most of my life. Raised south of Dallas for most part. I even lived in east Texas for a while, but eventually moved closer to the drier climate. I don't do the humidity. I'll take the desert any day. But I digress. Where was I? Oh yeah. My story starts while I was in eastern Texas. Although not there for many years, enough that this terrifying thing happened. Towards the end of 2011, my family moved up to a ranch-styled house. It's about 20 minutes west of Tyler, on an old Highway 64. We lived in an older community. We were one of the few younger families there at the time, mostly retired couples and neighbors, which made it nice since we had zero problems with noise or other neighbor issues from disrespectful individuals. No other kids running around and screaming next door, fighting over fences, and so it was peaceful and quiet during the time, besides what I'm about to tell you about. Now, the house. It was older, but built in the late 1970s. Three stories tall, two-car garage. I think it was originally a ranch-style house with an addition, an entire floor. We added on an extra room at some point, not long after we had moved in carpeted it, and made it into our bedroom since my sister was married by then, so she wanted her own place, but would stay there frequently, especially when she'd come home from college for breaks or summertime. On February 13th, I was sleeping in our bedroom, which is on the second floor, where all the bedrooms are located going up from the ground level, along with a small loft area that we referred to as the bonus room over the garage. This night, I remember waking up sometime in the early morning with a very intense feeling as if I was being watched closely from somewhere in the room, having my eyes open for perhaps five or so minutes trying to figure out what it could be before finally drifting back off into a dead, solid sleep. Little did I know, my dogs were sleeping soundly next to my bed that night. They did not wake up or seem disturbed at all by anything in the room which is a good sign. Maybe it was just me being paranoid. I'm not too sure. Maybe this was a dream. Maybe. At one point, I thought I'd heard what I thought was an animal fight or something going on outside. I heard growling, screaming and hollering, possibly even mechanical noises like a car revving up its engine, but not as much putting on the gear and peeling out, which is how I tried to describe it to my family later that morning. When they asked me, here's where things get weird. At first glance, you take your typical backyard. You know, sounds of animals or nearby livestock. Maybe some teenage kids partying into the early morning hours, playing loud music or drunk. But we didn't have any of that. Well, the livestock we did. But that was close by. And not too far off. They were never loud in the early morning. This is where things get a little foggy for me, though. I can't remember how long I stayed awake after the commotion outside dwindled down to a dull. I heard shuffling feet, 
and what sounded like something dragging something heavy. Part of me wanted to look out the window, but for some reason, I could not make myself do it. Was someone or something watching me? I continued to try and brush it off and go to sleep. This was the start of a massive chain of events that took place. This is when the sightings began. The following day, we found these large canine prints out behind our yard, behind the fence bordering the woodline. Not a lot of animal prints back there, besides two dogs, but this one was very large, with four to five clearly defined toes on each foot. We had coyotes in the area. This wasn't our first run-in, but maybe it was a mix of something. I tried to figure out what kind of tracks could have made these prints, since nothing I knew about them were like this. These were the largest canine prints I'd ever seen. We're talking humongous-sized, maybe 12 to 15 inches in length. Massive. A few nights later, we were all sitting down watching TV, late one night, and heard a loud commotion outside. My dad and younger brother went out to check things out and found fresh footprints all around the backyard. This is where we kept our trash bins. So they made sure everything was locked up real good, going back inside. The noises continued on and on, and you could tell my father and brother were spooked. My brother went back out there again to check things out, told me he saw a large shadow that really freaked him out. He only saw a silhouette, but it looked like a large dog walking on two legs. My father, of course, scoffed at him saying that can't be true. Went out there himself to check and didn't see a thing. The entire rest of that evening felt extremely eerie. We all felt on edge like something can happen at any given moment. It did not feel good. The following night right after, we had our first sighting of this creature as it was walking behind our fence line right where the forest starts and ends. Right in that area where you can clearly see from the backyard. This is also where we found the tracks the previous day. Dad saw it first out of all of us, began shining his light, thinking it was maybe a large coyote or dog, but had no idea what he was about to witness. It did not necessarily have a discernible snout or features, even though its ears were pointed, and it did have somewhat of a human-like face. I should probably be more specific. I used discernible in a way that relates it to looking like a dog, because while this thing did look canine to an extent, it also looked very human. Hopefully that makes sense, as in this thing looked partially human, partially canine. The eyes were large and red. At least they glowed red since my dad could not get a very good angle with the light off of it. He only got a quick glimpse though through the trees because it moved very quickly when it saw him. He didn't see much detail besides the pair of glowing eyes and how they were reflective. He said it looked very angry and the way it walked it had a hunch over stance, kind of like an ape would walk. He figured it was definitely at this point not a coyote even when they're out hunting at night. They don't do this. They won't hold your gaze for more than a split second before darting, and they certainly don't stand up on two legs like this, or are this size. This thing was trying to scare us away. We were not going to be intimidated. This sighting alone scared my father. He comes from the denial generation, as I like to call it. After this, we would see this thing several more times while it tried to even break into our home. My father always kept a loaded weapon nearby, just in case. This was the beginning of our nightmare. One night, that I won't forget, my brother was sleeping over at the house. He heard a huge crashing noise outside which woke him up. Seconds later, something violently slammed against the wall of his room, directly to the left where he laid in bed. He was living out of the house at the time, so, we heard this massive crash and something like a loud, bellowing growl all at once. We all go running outside, thinking somebody must have drove their car into the house, and we see this thing, what I would describe as a werewolf, running off into the distance at light speed. It was going so fast, my dad swore in front of us for the first time ever that he was so frightened by seeing this thing, demanding we get inside now. I was shaken up. And I thought my father 
for the first time, would need to change her pants. Another night, at around one in the morning, I was up watching TV, and I swore I heard the front door handle start to jiggle, like something or somebody was trying to get in. We don't have neighbors close by, and everybody else around us who lives near us are older couples. But certainly, no nightly intruder from them. This would only mean one thing. Quick note. The door doesn't lock, by the way, because the latch is broken, and my father has never bothered to want to fix it. Imagine that. So, it's only closed by pressure, or by propping something in front of the door. Now, oftentimes, my dad would always wear his hunting boots around, and many times would forget to put them away. He would leave them right in front of the door or right by the door. Because of the angle in which he would take them off at or leave them, the door could never fully open. Meaning that if this was a night he forgot his boots there, well, good luck getting in. So I run into my room next door, grab the loaded pistol that my dad had, just in case. I may have been younger, but I still know how to shoot. I run back into the living room after grabbing it and see something moving around in the backyard, right next to the sliding glass door. For some reason, this thing was trying to get into the house, but could not seem to figure out the latch on the door handle. Come to find out, what do you know? My dad had placed his hunting boots accidentally right in front of the door at an angle, keeping it from opening all the way. Talk about a lifesaver. So, I see this thing start running around there now. I'm terrified. Not sure what to do. So I slowly start walking toward the door while trying to keep my eyes on it, and trying to ensure this thing doesn't come busting through the glass sliding door. I open the door. It immediately rams right into the glass, like something that was super pissed off, wanting to get inside. Judging by the impact, I'm surprised the glass did not shatter, but I nearly flew back, soiling my pants. All the commotion woke my brother and father up, who come running down the hallway. I could hear my dad whispering loudly some things I won't repeat and runs to his gun safe. I have never seen that man work so quickly. He pulls out his 12 gauge like he's in business, gives it a good cock and runs right to the window and he's scanning. I have never seen him so analytical. I figured he was about to shoot right through the window if need be. Well, we are all trying to keep our eyes on this thing but it appeared to disappear. It didn't come back for a while after that. I believe this thing was trying to use intimidation tactics to drive us away. After all, before we moved in, this house that we had been told had been vacant for several years. I wonder why. Anyway, a few months go by now, and we go through a similar situation again. The next time, to my memory, my mom and brother were out in the garage one night, probably 10.30 p.m., looking for something or another. My brother swears up and down he hears something large moving outside the garage. My mom looks at him and goes pale. She had heard the same thing but did not want to say anything to my brother. They're too afraid to open the door, but now at this point, they begin to hear this thing breathing really heavily. Here's where it gets scary. The thing slowly puts its hands on the garage door, dragging its nails slowly across it, like it was deep scratching into the wood. It was this, I'm here, and I want to scare you, kind of thing. And my mom and brother freaked, and they run into the house, locking the door. My father was gone at this time. I believe out with a few buddies for a couple of nights and days, so he wasn't there. I was gone this night too, over at a friend's house, this panicked phone call from my brother, telling me what had just happened in the garage. I lost my cool and decided I was going to come back and get that thing. I was tired of this thing terrorizing my family. I'd had enough. I got in my truck, drove home at about 80 miles an hour. Well, maybe not that fast. It was pretty fast, though. I didn't care about getting pulled over. And I knew all the backwards anyway. My mom, after this, started heavily putting up sage all around and outside the house after this, in hopes of warding this thing off. She had also put multiple lines of salt all around the house and property. I am not sure in hindsight if this helped it or just pissed this thing off. So now a week goes by and we have zero activity. 
we think we got our way and won. But it's a short-lived victory. About another week or so. Maybe two weeks in total. I can't remember. This thing started making appearances yet again. This creature takes a dead deer with its innards torn out and chucks it at the house. I'll never forget it. I'm sitting there playing video games and I hear this really, really loud thud against the house. Boom! And I think, oh no, not again. I run outside to look and there's clearly this deer carcass, a mutilated one, that was thrown well over 50 feet into the house like a football. It was a doe, and a good-sized one at that. I don't know anyone or anything that can launch an adult doe over 50 feet into the air at a house. And the impact was loud. I could tell it hit hard. There was blood and guts splattered all over the house from the impact. This freaked me out and, not to mention, sucked. I was the one who had to clean it all up. After that, though, these sightings began to diminish severely. But we started smelling a very bad lingering odor of rotting meat and must. It would be really bad in the evening times, but not every evening. It was also never there in the mornings. I'm not sure what that was all about. I never noticed an odor when it was around, but I find all of this that I just told you about very interesting, to say the least. So there you go. That's the rundown of what happened and how it looked and acted. I'm pretty sure that whatever this was, it could smell me and would be able to find me if it wanted to. I don't know what this was or what it wanted. I believe it was evil, unnatural, and also very intelligent. I wonder where it went. Not too long after, maybe two years later, we ended up moving to West Texas. And while we still did have more encounters, they were very minor, to say the least. All the ones I told you about in this story were all the major ones. Afterwards, my father and the rest of my family pretty much refused to speak about it. I think they were too scared. But once we moved out to West Texas, we had no more weird stuff going on. No more hauntings, no more weird smells, no more encounters with strange animals we did not know. However, I'm very interested in knowing what this thing is though, and other people's encounters with it if they've had one. I've told a few friends of mine, and I've heard everything from skinwalkers to dogmen, but I'm curious to know, what is your opinion? This happened on my very first trip ever up to Alaska to go camping. Don't worry, I went during the warm months, or warm to Alaska's standard. Anyway, I wanted to go out camping for a while now, seen some beautiful pictures on the Alaskan outdoors on Earthporn subreddit. I had booked months off and managed to get enough money for the plane fares. During my stay there, I was going to be camping up north of Anchorage for quite a while. I had been reading up some of the local legends and lore about this town and surrounding areas in the weeks leading up to my trip. I was aware of the mysterious weeping lady, apparently associated with the area. But these were only mere local legends. I didn't believe in this sort of thing. I just thought they were exaggerations, made up by bored campers who had nothing better to do. So, I was by myself on this trip. I considered it a research trip of sorts. As much as I loved camping alone, sometimes it could be a little bit scary. I was, after all, in the depths of Alaska. It would have been stupid to think that nothing could go wrong. After a long day of flying and arriving in Anchorage, I managed to hire a car from the local rental agency. The drive towards my destination was mostly just tundra, which looked very nice in its way. I brought along my laptop so I could work on some research I'd been doing for the weeks leading up to this. Eventually, I found my way towards the campground after a long journey I found myself in front of my campsite. The site was very nice and secluded, which I loved. The site wasn't too far from the road. It would not be too difficult to get there or back. The road itself was pretty isolated. I hadn't seen any other cars during my whole journey to the campsite. Well, I call it a campsite. It wasn't a public campground, that's for sure. I actually had to have a moose guide take me all the way out here. Paid him a lot of money to do it. After setting up my tent, 
I fired up my little propane barbecue, cooked myself some dinner. At this point, it was around 7 o'clock. It would be dark soon. I sat and watched the sunset over the horizon as I ate my meal, thought about all the things that could happen to me during the next few weeks that I would be out there. Even though this was my first real trip ever, I had done ample research on camping in general to have a basic knowledge of what I should be doing while out on my own. After eating, I quickly brushed my teeth, then headed inside the tent for a sleep. I decided not to light any fires that night, nothing too crazy on my first day. It was getting to around 11 p.m. or so. I had been settling down into my sleeping bag for about an hour. As I was slowly dozing off, I had heard a strange sound coming from outside. I tried to ignore it, but the noise just got louder, lasting longer. Without really knowing how to respond, I decided that the only logical course of action was to just lie in wait, wait for it to be over. The sound is what I could describe to you as a loud, mechanical humming. It sounded like heavy construction machinery, but it was very muffled sounding. Like it was coming from underground, I guess you could say. That's impossible. I'm miles out here, in the middle of the Alaskan bush. There is nothing mechanical around me, for miles. I wasn't sure what to make of it. I tried to ignore it, and just focus on falling asleep. After a few more moments, the noise gradually began fading away. But I could not get it out of my head. What was making this noise? Maybe a plane or a helicopter passing, but none of those really added up. As sleep overcame me, I eventually forgot about the noise and fell fast asleep. I woke up in the morning, found nothing odd was out of place or had happened during the night. I ate my breakfast, packed up my things, ready to go and make camp the next following day. After getting everything all together, I set out. At this point, it was around noon. The weather was getting pretty nice. The sun was out and it wasn't too chilly. It made walking a little more pleasant. After about an hour, I decided to take a quick break, eat a little snack. I noticed something immediately as I began taking bites out of my rations. Everything around me was completely silent. It was eerily quiet. All you could hear was the wind blowing through the trees, a part where it sounded like nothing else existed. This made me feel uneasy. Usually there's always sounds going on in the woods. I quickly finished my small rations and got up from my spot, decided to keep going to my next campsite. I would say that it only took me an extra hour or two to get there. The spot was gorgeous, had a wonderful view of the river, and was right next to a large clearing. I set up my tent here, ate dinner, and eventually just stared at the fire as it burnt out. I was completely overly exhausted from the hike. I know I didn't tell you, but I had hiked probably about a good four or five hours overall. So as soon as the sun had set, I went to sleep. Nothing eventful that night either. The next day, I woke up, did the same routine, breakfast and a hike to my new campsite. When I got there, something was different. This place wasn't as scenic or as nice as the last. It was actually quite depressing and drab, but I figured it would do, since I didn't want to hike an extra few miles. I didn't notice this until the evening either, but there seemed to be this energy surrounding this particular spot. I don't know how else to put my finger on it, really. Even the air felt different. It was colder and harsher, like there was just this chill to the air. I felt unwanted and like I should leave. Quick side note. I've heard of legends and things like the Kushtaka, but I never paid any mind to it at all. I always just thought it was stuff of folklore and things to scare people. Maybe that's what visited me. I'll get to that in a moment. I felt even more drained after this day. As the sun began setting, I figured it was now better than ever to decide to turn in for the evening. I was already pretty spent, so that's exactly what I did. I pushed a little harder this day, going roughly about eight hours of hiking. I'm laying there in my sleeping bag, staring at the ceiling of my tent, not quite ready to shut my mind down, but my body was exhausted. I did not feel safe out there, staying by my now dying fire. I didn't hear any noise like before, but I knew something was out there. Call it instinctual or what, 
but I could just tell. And all of a sudden, I heard what sounded like somebody walking all around the campsite. It sounded like it was coming from all directions, so I couldn't pinpoint where exactly it was. It did not matter. I knew that somebody or something was there. Footfalls grew louder and louder and closer until I could make out what it was. Hooves. It was coming out from the distance of the forest, maybe no more than 100 to 200 feet away. My eyes began to grow wider and wider more and more as I hear this thing approaching. As this is happening, I'm trying to calm myself, thinking, wait a minute, this is simply a bison or caribou or muskox, something, you're fine. But I listened very intently to the footfalls. They were not quadrupedal. They were bipedal. And it was big. Whatever it was. Last I checked, none of those animals I just listed were bipeds or can function and move bipedally. Unless, of course, the animal kingdom out here felt like throwing me a wild card. I might have encountered something far more dangerous. I pulled my sleeping bag tight around me with fear now gripping me, paralyzing me, expecting the worse. This animal, assuming it was one, got closer and closer and closer, and now was probably no more than 20 to 30 feet away from the sounds of it, and it just stops dead in its tracks. I can hear it breathing and snorting. Now I'm certain that this is by no means a muskox or a caribou in any way, shape, or form. The night at this point is completely silent too, just like the day before as I sat in the woods eating my snack. I hear this thing start to move again, after being still for what felt like an hour, but it was really only about 10 seconds probably. It now circles my entire campsite, like it's scouting the perimeter, looking for signs of something, perhaps a person. My tent had no light coming from it, no reason to draw its attention towards me. Thank God. I was a few feet from the edge of the fire pit from where my tent was located. So I'm thinking to myself at this point, where is it looking? At the fire pit? Or is it looking at my tent? What's it looking for? Why is it circling me? After what I think was about 10 minutes of this thing just circling my tent over and over, not making much of a sound except heavy footfalls, I hear it stop right outside the backside of my tent and starts crouching down, it sounds like, breathing very heavily. It sounded to me like someone who has smoked their entire life and had just ran a marathon. Very labor breathing, raspy, very deep. I was petrified. So much so, I could have been made of stone. I think my knuckles were white from gripping my sleeping bag so hard. This is easily the scariest moment of what I'm about to tell you. I hear this thing start speaking. This deep, demonic voice just starts speaking. No, chanting. In this language I never heard. It sounded kind of like German, but much more guttural and tribal, if that makes any sense at all. But it wasn't talking. It was chanting or something. And as it began chanting, it started spitting and snarling more and continued chanting while walking around my camp. I was not sure what to do. Everything seemed to be happening so fast, I, my world was changing. It occurred to me that this might just be screwing with me, but it could very well be an evil spirit or some form of demon. I had no idea. i have never even heard of this before. It may not have been chanting, but that's the only way I know how to describe what it was doing. I'm pretty certain that whatever was out there, had I left my tent, I would probably be a goner. I could not grow the courage to do something so brave, to unzip my tent and to see what was out there. I was too petrified. I sat there, waiting for this thing to disappear, which eventually it did. I stayed awake the entirety of the rest of the night, not wanting to risk this thing coming back at all. I kept running different scenarios through my mind. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do if this thing comes back? How am I going to be prepared? What if it tries to break into the tent, drag me out, etc., etc.? 
it felt like time had stretched on forever until the sun began to come up. When I saw the first glint of light coming over the horizon from my tent, I got the hint. It was now time to pack things up and leave. I was not going to waste another second here, and I had no desire to. I was gone. Completely sleep deprived at this point, plus not getting a wink of sleep at all, I packed everything up and headed out back to where my pickup spot would be to meet my moose hunting guide. When I got back to the pickup point, the guy who was the owner was waiting for me with the biggest grin on his face. He had an over-the-top amused look, and I could tell he was trying not to laugh at me. I just returned the grin and pretty much gave him a look and said, Yeah, okay, you're right. It was a bad idea. And he asked me, Did you ran into the thing? I assumed what he was talking about and told him yeah. He tells me it's extremely dangerous to go out where I did, and that I was in that thing's territory. It doesn't much like strangers, he tells me and he's lucky this thing did not rip me out of my tent. He believes this thing is responsible for the many missing hikers in this area of Alaska alone. Sure, there are things like hikers dying from exposure, grizzly bears, all that natural occurring stuff, but then there's this entity, he called it. It will take your life and your soul if it can. I kept asking him on the way back, what is it? He wouldn't answer just kept saying it's best we don't talk about things we don't fully understand. He did say, even many of the natives warned him and others about being where we are during the trip. They too refused to speak about it in fear of it putting a mark on their very souls. That's my camping trip from hell. I hope you enjoyed, and sorry for any errors. I still have nightmares often about this trip. Maybe one day I'll have peace about it all. Me and my girlfriend decided on taking a hike at one of our favorite places, the Big Thicket National Preserve. It's an amazing place about an hour west of where we live. It's even supposedly got bunkers from World War II that are torn down and looted, but some remain intact. We always bring hiking gear and spend the whole day there until sundown. And then when we're ready, head back home or find somewhere to camp out if we have time left. On this occasion, I had my girlfriend drive so I could focus on just being completely alert, eyes looking out the whole time. This is where it starts. As we were driving, I noticed a figure on my side of the road running parallel to us, about 40 to 50 feet in front of the car, actually. At first, I thought it was another hiker, but something didn't seem right, so I asked my girlfriend if she saw it too. She did. It appeared to be canine in nature, but not really sure. It ran alongside us for about two miles, turning into the woods once we passed an old bunker that is still intact. I guess there are many more others in this area, all a part of the World War II era. We arrived at our hiking spot, which has a creek and several trails leading to different parts of Big Thicket. We decided what trailhead we wanted to start with, parked the car and proceeded to hike. Neither of us talked much about the upright canine we saw. Surprising, right? We hiked for about 30 or so minutes, and we took a break on the way. I had my eyes peeled, ears on high alert. I was secretly looking for that figure, but would be surprised if I saw it again. After our break, we kept on hiking until we reached another trail junction. This is where two roads led up separate hills. At this point, I felt something staring at us from behind a tree trunk directly next to me. It wasn't movement, though, because the area around us was still due to wind being blocked by foliage of said tree. It just felt like somebody or something staring at my backside with intent. I stopped dead in my tracks, slowly pivoted my head around with a full-body turn to face the tree. I don't know if it's because I actually turned around or what, but when I looked, there was nothing there anymore. We kept on hiking, and finally reached the end of that particular trail, where it's met up with another one that led to a different section of Big Thicket. We decided not to hike all the way in, about two or three more miles. Instead, head back up after exploring for about 30 minutes. 
It was at this point that me and my girlfriend split up. Don't ask why. And both of us wanted to explore, so we took our own separate trails to an area further into the big thicket. We found each other again, by chance or luck, since it's easy to get lost. But we had pretty good heads on our shoulders. We were not newbies to camping, or hiking for that matter. This time, I took the lead. My girlfriend was getting tired. And this is where my story takes a rather freaky turn. It was maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, and it started getting dark. The sun sets fairly late out here, but still, the darkness can surprise you out of nowhere if you're not prepared. I had a good flashlight on me, though, and I turned it on. So I'm shutting my light around, trying to find us the way back. And I saw something that almost made my heart stop with fear. It looked like a canine, but not quite like an ordinary dog creature. I'm referring to werewolves now, because this thing was standing upright on two legs. I told my girlfriend behind me. She believed me, and she said she also saw it too, briefly before it disappeared. I have no doubt in my mind that if she didn't lose sight of this thing so quickly, she would have seen all of it as vividly as I did. I made sure to ask her questions to get details about what she saw. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just me hallucinating. The whole time we were out there, we were both shining our phones around, trying to get back to the car. And we could feel this thing's eyes on us, like it was watching us the entire time. I don't know what it is, but that forest felt like it was alive. Everything was watching us. Anyway, we eventually make it back. But as you can probably tell, Big Thicket has its own unique vibe. Some parts are inviting and beautiful, while others can be terrifyingly ominous. That place holds some memories for sure. And I normally don't believe in monsters or spirits. But after my experience in Big Thicket, my girlfriend and I aren't so sure anymore. I was working as a forest ranger up here in Anchorage when this happened. My job at the time was to patrol the remote areas of the park, make sure nobody ever lit fires they weren't supposed to, or throw litter when they weren't supposed to. I was equipped with my own radio and rifle with me at all times, in case I had to deal with any squatters or crazy people who came in the woods looking to do bad things or maybe camping out at night illegally when they weren't supposed to. It was just before midnight on a Friday evening. I had been patrolling an area called Barney Creek. I hadn't noticed anything unusual happening, so I wasn't expecting anything like that later that night. But then I found a deceased person, a skeleton. More on that in just a second. On my way back to my car, is when I saw this body lying across the trail that I'd been walking on. At first, I thought it was maybe an animal. This is due to the condition that the body was in. But as I got closer and looked again, I realized it wasn't a bear corpse or any other animal. This is because there was no fur covering its flesh. It had obviously died for quite a while ago. After shining my flashlight around the area more thoroughly, with a sense of growing apprehension, tapping into whatever bravery might be needed, I slowly approached the remains, took out my camera, before beginning to take pictures of the evidence. I was in no way prepared for what I saw when I moved much closer to take a look. The skull. It was pretty badly rotted, and there appeared to be a bullet hole right behind the left eye socket. Some brutal execution must have also happened. Maybe even torture, judging by how bony and ripped out their chest area looked, without flesh, or what was left, covering up the ribcage. Whoever they were, somebody wanted them dead, and couldn't accept any opposition from whoever they were going after. This meant that whoever killed them was still around, and they'd be coming back, they could have been waiting out for me in the forest, possibly planning to take out their sick revenge on me. I had one mission, to get out of there as soon as possible and alert the authorities for backup. I had to run back as fast as I could, 
which was hard with how freaked out and terrified I was, still getting lost and occasionally trying to remember. Every time a branch or leaf would brush against me, I just suspected it was something that could kill me now, kind of like a monster's claw reaching up from behind bushes, ready to grab me by the neck and snap it like a twig. My heart raced with so much fear that I swear, it was almost going to pop out of my chest without any warning at all. Finally, after what seemed like forever, I managed then to get away but just collapsed onto the forest floor, completely exhausted. As soon as morning had arrived, I was successful in returning to the area, but the remains were gone. I couldn't tell if somebody had come in and taken them, or maybe some animal decided to bury their body under some dirt or leaves until fully decomposed. In any case, it didn't matter much because no one was going to find out who killed that person. But I realized afterwards, whoever did it might have been looking for me too. It's best not to say anything about my experience now while I'm still working as a ranger. Look, I don't know what happened, but here in Alaska at night, those skeletal remains still haunt me. I have never seen a cadaver in that bad a condition. But all I can say is, why didn't everybody just stay away from this area? Why did this happen? Who was this poor soul that got killed? It definitely looked malicious. Like somebody had just left the body there. I mean, that's kind of obvious. Had it been an animal, it would have been eaten on, torn apart. But the body had been there for a while and there were no signs of any animals even touching it. How strange. Almost paranormal, if you will. I am a 20-year veteran in the Forest Service. I've worked as a ranger now for 12 years in my time. And in all my time working for the government, I've never encountered anything out of the ordinary. That is until my last station job as a ranger at Gooseberry Falls State Park in Minnesota. It was quite possibly one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had while on duty, and certainly not something I'll ever forget. Well, to explain how it happened, we need to go back about six months. Before that incident, I had been planning on retiring. My son had just graduated college and was looking to move closer to Minneapolis. So, once he made the offer that he would work part-time with me while he looked for a full-time position, I decided to pass up retirement and stay on the job. By the way, I should make a note that this was all pre-COVID. I had heard rumors of management positions opening up in the area. So, after discussing it with him, we both agreed that he would come back home for around six months while I waited for the opportunity to present itself. I was first introduced to Gooseberry Falls State Park during my orientation as a ranger there, and they took us out into the park at nighttime. It was an amazing sight, getting to see all these bright campfires down below from way above on top of the waterfalls. The rocks around the falls are very smooth and slippery due to years and years of erosion. You have to be careful if you want to climb down to view the falls at night. Our group had just finished our tour and was going to head back towards our cars when one of my co-workers, Tom, suggested that we climb down the falls, just, you know, for the sake of it. I agreed, and we should have known better, and so did a handful of others who were nearby. As soon as we began climbing down, I sensed something wasn't right, but being fearless, I pushed those feelings aside as nothing more than nerves. It started out easy, everyone traveling downward in a single file behind each other, staying close and yet far enough apart for safety's sake. Then, around three quarters of the way down, the things began to get a bit more dangerous. Tom fell. I didn't see him do it, but I heard the commotion. One of my other co-workers had seen what had happened, yelling up to us that he needed help getting Tom back up the rocks. Two guys rushed down to assist in whatever way they could. 
and while Tom was being helped back up, one of my female friends called out for help above him, saying she was slipping. It turns out that one part of the path she had been on, had been walking, had gave way underneath and sent her tumbling downward. While this may have been scary in and of itself, what happened next could only be described as something straight from a horror movie. We're all standing there, in shock at what had just happened. When I heard the sound of movement, I looked up, and there, at the top of the ridge, was this figure with long, dark hair watching me. It was terrifying. It was in all black, and had these faint yellow glowing eyes. It was in that moment that I felt my entire body give way, as if I suddenly lost control. The next thing I knew, I too was falling down to the grounds below me. Everybody rushed over to help save me, and one guy managed to grab hold of my hand while another wrapped his arms around one leg, for whatever little good that did. They tried pulling me back up, but it was no use. I looked down below, and I could see there were people trying to help my friend, though they weren't having much success. I knew then that we were all going to die right here on these rocks if somebody didn't do something fast. That's when I remember the park ranger telling us about one of the waterfalls in this area, called Lucifer Falls, which, for some reason, nobody had ever been able to find after climbing down to view it at night. It was said that once you get close enough, you could hear voices, supposedly spirits, whispering your name from below. Now, what is most troubling about this story is not so much what happened to me and my co-workers, but what happened with Tom and the female friend as they were being pulled back up to safety. Before either of them can make it out of the water completely, we noticed that their eyes had turned from their normal state into a solid black. It was like at this moment that my two co-workers realized that they were struggling with weren't actually Tom or the girl. I'll never forget hearing one of them scream as he pointed downwards towards whatever our friends had become. The other one, just before Tom and his girlfriend can pull themselves completely up onto the rocks, let go with both hands, jumping back down into the water below to avoid capture. We watched him swim off in the opposite direction, but by this time, there was nothing we could do to save him. We never did find out what happened to any of them after that day. I can only assume they were captured and are now being used for some sort of test subjects, for whatever their reasons may be. Just looking at my own hands now, I can still see the long dark hair growing them, like I saw that day. That's why I'm warning you all not to venture down this path at night. As a matter of fact, it might be best just to stay away from these woods entirely during nighttime hours, like we should have. Whatever it is that inhabits these lands does not seem too keen on having people wandering around here at night. But if you are, be careful, for you may soon find the woods themselves can't tell the difference between friend and foe. I suppose it is expected that anybody who chooses to follow in the footsteps of smoking the bear would be possibly stuck in a few scary situations. That certainly was the case for me as I spent my nights working alongside park rangers on some of the most dangerous and terrifying trails in the States. It's not what one might think about being a ranger though. We don't spend every day sitting around watching deer graze or children play in the playgrounds. Instead, what happens behind those locked gates is something more akin to horror movies than a picnic. If you manage to find your way through these wooded corridors without being eaten alive by some wild animal or eaten after a bear, you could end up with some serious psychological damage. As my first summer as a ranger was coming to an end, I decided that I wanted to spend one last night in the woods alone. Not many rangers do that kind of thing anymore, but for me, it was sort of this cleansing ritual. My girlfriend had just broken up with me at the time, and I needed time to work through that emotional trauma. 
I knew there were other people who understood my pain. They would be likely willing to talk about the world ending when we got close enough in proximity. But every man needs his space from time to time, even if he is working with the confines of the law. To be honest, I wasn't really sure where to expect to be out there in the woods with no one else around. I had been alone quite a few times before, but never running into any real trouble. But this time, my mind was racing through the worst case scenarios, and it almost felt like fate that I would get caught up in some kind of adventure by myself. Either I was going to find somebody who could relate to all my situation, or perhaps even fall for them as they helped me do it all. Anyway, I made it to the trailhead, eventually and began hiking down towards it to my favorite spot at Lake Oroville State Park. The entire park is beautiful, located not far from Sacramento, but until you are actually standing deep within its borders, you can't truly grasp its beauty. I loved watching the weather roll in over the water, feeling the cold air as it rushed past my face and into my lungs. Waking me up from a lazy afternoon nap, I felt at peace with myself every time I visited this spot. But not so much that other people bothered me. That's why this was almost certainly going to be a good night. I had just crossed over one of the small bridges leading across the lake when I heard something rustling behind me. More similar to low growls than anything else, really. It sounded like something was stalking towards me. Perhaps a bear. The only thing about these sounds that didn't scream bear were its frequency. They were more sporadic than I would have expected. My ears picked up this distinct sound of footsteps, more than once actually, as if somebody were running towards me, directly through the thicket. Not wanting to meet with whatever was out there on my own terms, I scrambled for one of the trees and threw myself up into it to try and hide. Unfortunately, jumping back had cost me more time than I realized, and by the time that I reached around and grabbed hold of a branch, something hit me hard right in the side. You know, it feels like forever before I felt like landing against something soft and squishy. It wasn't exactly warm or inviting, so all of those other feelings must just be an illusion, brought on by adrenaline. It only took a single moment for me to realize what had been happening. That I had been wrapped at the ankles, waist, shoulders, and neck in some kind of netting. I didn't know what exactly it was made out of, but it wasn't rope. It was some sort of binding material. My hands were then completely immobilized by entanglement, as well, so there wasn't much I can do other than struggle against my bonds. A dead end endeavor, if there was ever one. Now, the first thing I noticed when I could finally see again is it was completely dark around me all light coming from behind with only blackness ahead. Two dim lights appeared along the walls on either side of me and began approaching slowly as my eyes would now adjust. They were really more like natural animal eyes than any sort of man-made illusions. Even worse, I noticed that the blackness ahead of me wasn't really coming from a lack of light at all. Instead, there appeared to be some kind of organic wall blocking up my view, spreading out across the room to each side. I had no idea how large this place was, but it must have been bigger than what I could see. One behind me and another in front of me. They made themselves known moments later. Footsteps. The noises were too far away for me to make out at first, but then I could hear they belonged to something and more than two. Now at this point, fear began gripping my heart as I lashed out against my binds once again, only to find they hadn't been loosened in the slightest, or so I thought. We'll get to that in a moment. I was hauled from my small prison by several sets of long clawed hands that dragged over what appeared to be some kind of altar. 
It was a much different from one of those sacrificial altars, appearing to be used in ancient times for rituals meant to appease unworldly beings who were said to lurk within the space between two worlds. But this one seemed more like a place where people got together for satanic worship or other unholy activities. These beings holding me lured me down onto it and began weaving this sort of flower all around me while chanting something in this ungodly language. I was so terrified I I swear I could have had a heart attack. I couldn't make out all the words, but I had no idea what this thing was or what they were saying. The entire group of these things began chanting in unison as they surrounded me, continued weaving more of this plant material around me. It felt like forever before they finally got to the last one. All I could do was just lay there on my back, completely immobilized by flowers while these creatures circled around me once and turned their backs towards me. The chants stopped abruptly, and every creature but one turned to leave. The remaining one tossed this mask aside, revealing a set of devilish features underneath it. What I had been dealing with looked like a combination of wild feral human beings and kind of goblinish people. You know what it kind of reminded me of? the trolls or orcs in Lord of the Rings. Humanoid, feral looking, but also not human. That's what they reminded me of. It stood there, shaking its head from side to side, slowly with its arms raised upward as I tried to break free. Now, again, I cannot reiterate how terrifying this was. I had no idea what was going to happen, and I was convinced in that moment I was about to be sacrificed by some sort of under-cave dwelling creatures. I was so scared beyond belief. Then, this thing pulled its arm down, after shaking its head, and walked away. Completely immobilized, I tried my best to get out of my entrapment, and I believe it was the massive amounts of adrenaline exploding through my entire being that allowed me to break free. As I did, though, I could hear these things coming back, and I knew I had to escape as quick as I could. Once fully free, I started to run for it, escaping in just a matter of time, feeling my way out of this black organic labyrinth. I don't know if I was in a cave or what this was, but as I reflect back on these memories, I had so much flooding through my mind, I feel like I kind of blacked out. I don't really know if I remember much after that but I do distinctly remember collapsing on the ground and being found later on. I know, that's probably very anticlimactic, but when the human body endures that kind of trauma, stress, it does things to the brain that aren't exactly normal. Anyway, I was treated at the hospital, ultimately taken back to the station, and sent home. I didn't actually believe what I experienced at first, I thought it was some crude nightmare or horrible hallucination, but it wasn't until later that I realized it must have been something that really happened, because I actually had binding marks around my ankles, my thighs, my waist, and my wrists. Those bindings were on tight, and I must have wiggled free enough that I loosened them. Like I said, whatever the bindings were were this crude rope vine material. I've never seen it before in my life. None of them really believed me, though, when I actually got a chance to describe what happened. They thought I was either making it up or just had a bad nightmare. As you can probably bet, this incident has been difficult for me. At any rate, this is my story, and I hope you can get enjoyment from a real-life traumatic event. I don't care if you believe me, and if you choose to read this, which, by the way, you have permission to, I don't care if your readers believe me. I know there's something out there that lives underneath the ground, something that isn't quite human. One night, my friend and I were driving through eastern Texas late at night. We were on our way to Austin from Oklahoma. It's a pretty long drive, 700 miles each way. Along the route, 
we saw what looked like a large man walking along the highway. He appeared to be carrying something in his right hand, so we thought he might have been walking back from a, maybe a party or something. But as we got closer, we could tell it wasn't a human, but some sort of person in a reptile suit. But they were about seven feet tall. And the closer we got, and the more our headlights illuminated him or it, something just seemed so off. First off, this was a long stretch of road, with nothing out here. Why would somebody be walking around out here in the middle of the night in a lizard costume? But the closer we got, we could begin to see that the suit or costume this man was supposedly wearing looked very realistic. So I figured I would blow the horn, maybe get his attention. And as soon as I did, I regretted it. I say it because I don't know if it has a gender or if what it was, but it turned to face us. That's when I realized this was not somebody in a costume. This was some failed science experiment or something. And I could tell that whatever was in its hand was part of a dead animal. I couldn't tell what. I want to say maybe a dead fox. This was real and definitely not a human. I am one of those people who believe in these things, but I'm writing this testimony because for some reason, something inside me told me to do so. I don't know if I'm ever going to go back there again. And ever since that experience of August 1st, 2014, I can close my eyes and still see the look on his face at us running away and him holding something which looked like a large animal. Now, before I even got up to him, we were doing about 80 miles an hour. And when we saw him and the headlights off in the distance, we began to slow down. Now, when he turned his face around and looked at us, his eyes were beat red. They looked like they had been lit up by fire. Although it's impossible, there were no lights around. He looked like he wasn't supposed to exist or be real. Like he looked like he walked off a movie set. If I can be real with you, it reminded me of a creature you'd see in one of those 2000s sci-fi movies on the sci-fi channel. Not animatronic, but not in a costume either. Just very realistic. Anyway, on another occasion, my friend and I were sitting around at night, having some drinks and talking about how glad we were to not be driving in the country during this time. Who knows what might be out there lurking, waiting for us. Pretty soon, our conversation turned to more serious matters, like Bigfoot, UFOs, and paranormal, both of which we're all very interested in. All of a sudden, we heard some very loud footsteps as if somebody was running outside. We both got up, turned off the lights to see if we could see anything, although we couldn't. I feel like from now on, I'll try and be more aware of what's happening. Not just at night, but think about all these things that go down during the day. Sometimes I wonder if they are coming closer to civilization, or is it me, or am I the only one who feels this way? One thing is for sure, I'll really try and never let my guard go down again, because while driving down some empty backcountry road late at night, you'll wake up sometimes with goosebumps, thinking about what might be out there. I know I'll never forget that encounter. I live about 40 minutes away from Syracuse. I had a sighting with this black snake-like creature that was upright like a man six foot tall, and I saw it running into the woods when I made eye contact with it. About two years prior to this sighting, I saw some red eyes at night off of Buckley Road. Now, these eyes were pretty high up from the ground and very close together. At the time, I thought it was just eye shine, but after this encounter, I'm thinking it was more than that. Not that it was an eye shine, but more so what it came from. Definitely not a deer, like I may have thought it to be then. I'm sorry there's not a lot to my story, but the being in which I saw was very, very strange. To be honest, I've never shared this story with anybody before. But after listening to all your stories on how other people have seen these similar reptilian creatures, 
I don't really know if I'm scared anymore. It's comforting to know I'm not alone in having these strange sightings. And I'm glad to know that when you see them, it doesn't always mean you're going to get hurt. Somehow this makes me feel safer. I guess thank you for any helpful information you might have. I used to be a resident of Texas, actually. And although I'm currently in Colorado, I still have family down there. But that's not the part that concerns me. So let's go over with what does. My sister was studying at the university in Texas, and she started telling me about strange things going on at where she has lived. She's told me stories about finding large clawed footprints out in her yard and pastures, seeing strange lights at night through her windows. Especially since she kind of lives out in the country, there's no street lights or nothing, and the weird lights kind of come and go. She's not a believer in the paranormal or UFOs, so she's pretty unconvinced, but does find the sightings and lights very strange. I've dismissed these claims as nothing more than paranoia at the time, or maybe an overactive imagination. Until one time, visiting my parents, who are actually in Cedar Hill. This was in 2014, by the way. I had heard noises outside that sounded somewhat like growls at first, but as the night went on, I realized they were far too deep to be anything other than something maybe like a bear. The prints were the same prints my sister had been seeing. They looked wrong. I remember my father grabbing his flashlight, heading out to see what was making these noises, while my mother and I stayed put inside. I heard him go out there, and kind of mumbling to himself for a minute. Then it went quiet. Then he runs back in, and he describes to us seeing a creature around 5'10", covered from head to toe in dark black to green scales, looking almost like the reflection of moonlight. It had a very large muscular build, three sharp claws in each hand, and a mouth full of fangs. My dad was so pale. The thing apparently snarled at him and retreated back into the tree line. My dad described it like he caught it doing something, and it seemed startled. So who knows what that's all about? But I've never seen him so scared out of his mind before in my life. He told me he has no idea what that thing was, and only remembers it making a horrible, high-pitched scream before disappearing. We came to find out the next day that this creature had been seen on their property in recent days by their neighbors. My parents didn't have a camera system, so we had no way to make that proof. Of course, we didn't find out about the whole neighbor seeing this thing until later. My dad still does not know what it was, or why it would just up and visit his house like that, out of nowhere. I tried to research and look up reptiles native to Texas, which are obviously quite a few, and nothing really fit, except large lizards, such as the monitor lizards, which aren't supposed to be here anyway. So, at least there's that much. But that doesn't even begin to describe what this being looked like. The interesting bit is my father described the strange lizard man creature as having a very human face as he described it. He also made note that it looked in highly intelligent. It gets more strange than that. My sister came across the story of a girl who saw some kind of creature near her home. This was also in Texas back in 2013. She found the story on Facebook, printing out the story to show my father so he knew that she wasn't just making up her own stories or anything. Of course, her showing him that was before his own sighting, because he didn't believe it at the time. He brought this article over to me, and I got back home. I wasn't sure what to make of it at the time. And my grandmother, who's also from Dallas, but has since moved away now, she told us that she used to see unexplained lights all the time outside of her house, and she lives in Garland. I don't know much about these reptilian entities, but if they really are real, I'd like to know why there's so much activity around Dallas. My grandmother explained to me that she used to see lights outside of her house all the time late at night, and sometimes, when she'd look out the window, there would be this large creature standing there in the street, peering in at her, as if it wanted to come in, but wouldn't. 
At first, this obviously terrified her, until one day she realized that whatever this thing is, it, I guess, wasn't harmful. It just stood there, glowing yellow eyes, with some sort of horrific expression, like it just wanted to scare my grandmother. She got after it. She would cuss at it, open the door and yell it, tell it to go away. It never would. It would just stand there and watch her. At one time, she even called my grandfather who was at work, and he said there was nothing out there with her. Of course, she would keep looking out the window again to see if it had gone away, but no. It would still just stand in the street, like its feet were rooted to the ground while she watched it. And this went on for years, until she finally moved away out of that house. We have no idea what that's all about. Now, when I told my grandmother about what had happened to my sister and us the one night, she got really quiet, asked me not to tell anybody else. People might think we're crazy. After all, we got some of those looks after telling a few friends what had happened. And just last week, I saw more news stories pop up on these lizard men seen outside of Dallas. I did another search online where they described them as having green skin, bulging eyes and whatnot. My sister, upon doing some more research, even saw a YouTube video where some guy apparently got footage of these things, but I don't know about that. Supposedly happened in California. If lizard men are real, what is happening? Is it just because of the increase in population around Dallas, or is there more something sinister happening? And by the way, my father has never shown interest in cryptozoology or the paranormal. But I know he's now terrified. He believes something is stalking this house specifically. I think my sister is starting to open up. He told me he wanted to move away, ASAP. He hasn't slept right since that night, which was a while ago now. And he won't be sleeping any better now that he knows more about these things. As for me, I'm still not 100% sure what I believe. But I try to be open-minded and understand there is something going on. Something more than what I can comprehend or understand. I was 15, and I was walking home from school. It's fall, so the days are getting shorter now. Walking down a neighborhood street that leads to my house, I noticed something in the corner of my eye as I turned onto the corner of my street. It appeared to be like a wolf-man creature standing at the end of some woodline, poking out. Immediately, I was transfixed and virtually had no idea what it was I was looking at. I kept staring at the creature and saw that I thought it was about maybe 10 feet tall. But I can tell you, it was for sure covered with this jet black fur, looking very similar to that of a dog. The beast kept looking at me, and I noticed it was not fully a dog, but rather had the characteristics of that of a human. It was a distressing sight, and one that made me feel quite ill. I kept walking briskly to get home. When I did, I immediately told all my family, and they still don't believe me. It's taken me 18 years to put this down, but I know it's time. Time to heal and make sense of the trauma that has latched itself onto my life. See, I'm much older now, obviously. Married and have two kids. I'm 34 and have the most wonderful husband in life. But I can't forget what happened in October of 2003. It's funny. As time goes on, it seems a world away now. A strange time when technology did exist, but we couldn't do much on it. Not like now. A little background on me. I was the youngest of five girls and lived with three of my sisters and my parents in our large country house here in Ireland. I'll never forget the night when my elder sister and I were arguing over something silly. I think she had broken my hair dryer with her naturally curly hair. That always seemed to be getting in my way somehow. We had a huge argument in the top room, as we called it. That is the living room. 
which was situated at the top of our house, which was built on the almost vertical slope. From the top room, we had a huge window that had a view of the surrounding countryside. Fields beyond fields, the perfect scene to gaze out on and meditate. I mean, neither of us were focused on the scene, but rather were furious with each other. We were home alone, so no parents were there to intervene. As we continued screaming, we saw a flash of purple light come from the window. It was October here in Ireland, so it was pitch black. So the immediate flash of light was startling, causing us both to scream. I looked at my sister and watched as the color completely drained from her face. We both thought perhaps it was a car passing by the country road below. It's dad, my sister said. He must just be pranking us. My dad was a notorious prankster, but even I felt he couldn't pull such an elaborate prank. Not like this. I edged closer to the window and looked out. The fields below me were cloaked in darkness, and in the distance, I could see some lambs resting on the grass. All seemed serene, or so I thought. My sister screamed again, pointing in the direction of the lambs. I stuck my face to the window, raised my hands around my temples to focus, looking out, scanning for anything unusual or dangerous. She told me she saw something move, out there, beside the lambs. Something dark. I reprimanded her, told her it could just be a cow or maybe a bale of hay. But she was even paler now. We both remained in the room and just decided to watch some TV. Although, as we stared at the screen, I know for a fact that neither of us could enjoy the program, but were feeling a sense of uneasiness and dread. The next thing that happened was probably the worst moment of my life. The purple light flashed again from the outside, filling our top room with a startling purple light. It then seemed to zap completely, and once again, we were immersed in total darkness. My sister and I both screamed and ran to comfort one another. We both naturally looked out at our surrounding fields for any evidence of what could have caused this light. We didn't need to look out at the fields. About ten yards away from us, outside our window, and right beside our car was a monster or beast such as I had never seen before in real life, or in any movie since. It was maybe seven to eight feet tall towering over my modest Clio car and staring dead at us in the face with a look of curiosity. This creature was standing like that of a human, but covered in matted fur. It had a huge six-pack, rippling muscles all throughout its calves and legs, chest and arms. This thing looked like a flipping dog bodybuilder. We both stood at the window, the transfixed and unable to process or comprehend what we were seeing. My sister moaned in terror, and she said, We're going to die. And she broke down right there. I couldn't respond. My eyes were just glued to this creature as I traced its broad shoulders, coated in this dark fur. I studied its face, which was both dog and human. It looked disgusting. It could have looked remotely handsome had it not been for the fang-like teeth or the small, beady yellow eyes. This thing looked like it was full terror. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was locked in a stare. It must have been about 15 minutes when a car drove past our house and the headlights illuminated this beast. At this, it got down on all fours and scuttered into the hedges fully disappearing from sight. The electric went back on immediately, and we both felt utterly grateful that this beast had not come any closer or tried harming us. After that incident, we told our parents, who in turn then informed the police. They took down all the information and passed it on to an environmental agency whose specialty it is to deal with wild animals. The person told us that there were strange sightings in the area, but conclusively, 
didn't have enough evidence to make a move on it. And of course, the police didn't want to deal with it. I mean, this could have been a major news story. They were really just wanting to bury it. But I just thought of that creature, and what it truly could have been capable of. What if it could have harmed a child? Could the thousands of people missing in Ireland have been caused by this apparition of a creature? All these questions not only haunted me then, but they continue to haunt me. Although it's been 18 years, I still can't shake the memory out of my head, nor can my sister. We both want answers. I don't live very far from where the incident took place, and my family still live in the home to this day. I can even look at my bathroom window and see the garden, the top room, where 18 years ago, two young girls stood in black terror, facing death straight in the eye. I clutch my kids tightly when the memory comes back, when they play outside, amongst the green fields and the golden sun. I don't take my eyes away. If I do, I can't find them. Terror fills my being. I have a feeling the creature is still out there somewhere, and I'll die myself before I let my children be harmed by this thing. It was a relaxing morning, by all accounts, and I had just finished my shift at the hospital I'm working at. I'm trying to recall exactly, but this would have been early October, around last year of 2020. COVID cases were going up fast, and things were getting scary. Every day, I began to feel more and more hopeless. Being a doctor during a pandemic is no piece of cake. Well, this morning was destined to be just for myself. I was making an omelette, assembling all my toppings on my chopping board. The cooking is immensely relaxing to me, and I was feeling all well this morning, trying to remain positive. However, I had woken up with a scratch on my neck and noticed when brushing my teeth. And to be honest, it freaked me out as I didn't know what in the world had happened. However, I dismissed it and thought I must have moved awkwardly during the night, right? I set down my omelet on a plate and then went to use the bathroom. As I came down to the kitchen to get my food, I noticed it wasn't there. I paused and was confused. I then began to doubt myself and checked everywhere. I began to think I was having maybe a concussion and was getting freaked out. However, at that moment, I heard a growling sound and looked out on the patio. On my patio was the strangest creature I had ever seen. It was crouched on the ground, covered in fur, and it resembled some type of ape dog thing. It had large fang-like spikes jutting out of its back, like they were some kind of weapon. Lo and behold, the creature was sitting there, waiting for me, like it was wanting to pounce. It was that of dog and man, I guess, intertwined. Its eyes looked wild and feral, but very human. It had large teeth like a Rottweiler, and its face was coated in this thick mane. Think like a lion's, but black. It was terrifying. Instantly, I felt sick to my stomach watching this thing inches away from me. I debated whether or not I should call somebody, but it was immensely difficult to move a muscle. I began to fear I was just having a hallucination. My aunt actually, after all, had suffered from manic mental health issues and had similar sightings, so I wondered if maybe the stress of the year had caused me to have a breakdown. But I know what it was that I saw was more than real. It was before me, as real as any object in nature could be. I mean, all sorts of questions began firing off my head. What was this? Why was this here? What did it want for me? And more importantly, what is this thing capable of? I began to understand why some people like having guns. If I had a gun, I would have no doubt shot this thing in the face. This creature continued sitting there, eyeing me, like it was waiting for the right moment, as if it wanted me to make the first move, like it was being sly, as if I had somehow accidentally caught it in the act of doing something, and now, last minute, it was trying to make a move. I focused and concentrated, running to grab my phone. 
I called the police and explained everything. And unfortunately, by the time they arrived at my apartment, there was no trace that this thing had even left. I explained my job and the stress I was under to the police, and they left me in peace and thanked me for my service. However, I knew what I saw was real. This being or creature or animal, whatever was an actual flesh and blood thing. I'm not crazy. I've never had hallucinations like that in my life. It is something out of this world. I also feel like it's important to note, I don't watch your fancy horror movies. That's not me. Hell, with the pandemic, I hardly have time for anything. Something, dare I say, otherworldly and all my scientific reasoning is not enough to explain or comprehend what this was. I just hope that I never see this thing again, and it leaves my brain, my community, and myself in peace. Luckily, I'm pretty busy to distract myself, so I don't have these thoughts intertwining in my day-to-day -day life. Thank you for being an outlook for people like us. Even if our stories don't always sound the most believable, I know there's somebody like you who will allow us to vent and share and express our stories. It was a cold wintry night, and the year was 1998. I had just split from my girlfriend and was feeling pretty awful about it. My days were filled up with depression and isolation. I spent a lot of time in my head just basking in self-pity. One of my favorite pastimes was to walk into the woods at night, close to my house. There was a huge expanse of dense forest, home to many creatures. I did not feel any fear at all, but rather put on my rain jacket, a torch, and set off on my way. This was before phones or GPS, so I just had to trust my own intuition would bring me on the right path. It always seemed to work, for the most part. On this night, however, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. It was an eerie feeling, one that I had never experienced before. I just kept walking along my walk and shook it off. Depression could do these things to your mind, I knew. And about a half an hour into my walk, I saw something blue ahead. Now, I couldn't make out what it was so I kept walking towards it. Strangely enough, I didn't feel that much fear, but rather a sense of curiosity. What other creature would be roaming in the forest at this time, especially one that was blue? Now as I got closer, I realized the creature or person was about the same size as myself. It was sitting down on a small embankment beside the river. It seemed to have had a long blue trench coat on, and I just assumed it was somebody who liked to walk late at night and kept walking. But, some primal part of my brain was causing me to feel anxiety. I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd encountered danger. As I passed in front of whatever or whoever it was, I heard a gasping sound, and my head immediately turned to the sighting. It was the most petrifying, horrifying thing I'd ever seen. Its face was ghostly white, empty sockets for eyes that emitted this orange light. It had no nose, but rather just nothing, a small mouth. Its skin was white and pulled tight against it, as if it had been dug up from a grave. I tried to scream and then immediately began to run back, not looking. Every so often, my mind would seem to hear the gasping sound, and I began to run faster and faster, anticipating that this thing was following. When I got home, I dropped to my knees and thanking the Lord for sparing me. I had no idea what it was that I encountered in the deep woods, but to my untrained eye, it appeared something supernatural and demonic. I still have nightmares about this incident to this day and just wish it never happened. But needless to say, I live very far away from that area, and I have no reason to visit there. But the memory is still etched into my brain. The eyes of the creature, its mouth, and its skin, everything about it. I know I should probably try counseling for this incident, but 
It's just too traumatic to talk about. That's why I'm writing this down. Maybe this email will help me clear up my mind. I suppose I should give you some context. This happened in the mid-80s in New Orleans, Louisiana. It was a hot summer's day, and we were all getting ready for my eldest daughter's wedding. We had been looking forward to the event for months. We all couldn't wait. In the weeks prior to the wedding, my youngest daughter had been acting strange. She kept staring out of her bedroom window, gazing out into the woods beyond, and even seemed distracted. When we tried to get her pumped up for the wedding, she didn't show any real interest. How odd. I was worried. My youngest, whom we'll call Tammy, has always been very vivacious and excitable. I had no idea what was going on with her. The night before the wedding, we all went to bed pretty early, including myself and my husband. Now, it's important to note, I woke up at around 2.30 a.m. as I heard a strange sound. Remember, I'm a brave girl, and I felt no need to wake my husband, who could usually never be roused from sleep anyway, especially during the night, and once he's out, he's out. So, I put on my housecoat and my slippers walked down the stairs to investigate. My mind was still confused from having woken up from a deep sleep, so I didn't notice immediately that Tammy was staring up from the patio door into the woods. Tammy was around eight at the time and was dressed in a long white nightgown. I called to her, but she didn't answer. As I moved in closer, I was getting exasperated and scared. I had no idea what was wrong with my daughter or why she was looking out so much into those woods. But as I took her head and led her back to bed, I gazed out too and saw something terrible and frightening. It appeared to be a man, but not a man. Rather, some sort of creature in the form of one. Chalky, burnt skin, wrapped in what appeared to be this cloth. As I looked closely, it had no eyes, but rather two large hollow holes. Its nose, too, was caved in and looked more like a beaten in the skull. This thing was terrifying, and terror filled my entire soul, and I wondered what in the world was I looking at? Would we have to call it the wedding? This was clearly what my daughter had been so transfixed with for the last few weeks. Immediately, I raced up the stairs and put my daughter to bed, and got into bed myself hoping that the creature would spare myself and my family. I had no idea what to do. Would people think I was crazy if I told them? Would the authorities put me in a mental institution? This was also the mid-80s, and mental health just meant somebody was crazy and dangerous. So, I just went, fast asleep. When I awoke, I wrote an account of everything I had seen. But... I have kept that documentation hidden for many years now. I am only now ready to share it if you want to reach out to find more. Tammy was never the same after that incident and has spent much of her life in and out of mental institutions. I work with the University of Paris. It's my job to explore the deep woods, identifying strange and fascinating animals gathering as much evidence as I can of new and endangered species. It's a wonderful job, really, but occasionally you do encounter some really bizarre things. As a matter of fact, one of these times was around 2004, back when I was just a rookie trainee. I was buzzing with the newness of the job, fresh out of college, and had such an enthusiastic energy to work. I went on a hike up a nearby mountain with two of my colleagues. The mountain overlooked a vast expanse of forest, and you could just see rows and rows of trees as far as the eye could go. It was a wondrous and beautiful sight. As we reached the peak of the mountain, we decided it was best to camp out. It was still a calm and wonderful night. However, it didn't remain still and calm for long. That night, at around two in the morning, I was awakened with my colleagues by a loud yelling. We unzipped our tents and immediately 
charged off to investigate to see what it was. We seemed to grope around in the darkness and saw nothing or any evidence of what this could have pointed to. Eventually, we all just walked to the embers of our campfire and huddled around. It was dying out, but we decided to wait for a few minutes to see if whatever made this noise would maybe make an appearance. I, for one, was super excited as I thought I was going to get to see something maybe cool or edgy. I went to grab my camera, but at that moment, we heard a gasping sound. We turned around and saw something I have never seen before. It looked gross, like this pale-looking thing on all fours, crawling around. It didn't have much of a face, but knowing what I do now, my only guess is that this was a crawler, I think they call it. It ran off and scurried. I tried to trace this thing, but it was already gone. The only thing I saw was its bright white skin. My eyes were able to lock onto it, but not for long. The initial excitement and youthful curiosity I felt had soon dissipated, and I felt a sense of dread, and also a sense of rightful arrogance at thinking I knew or had the capacity to understand the extent of the full natural world. Here before me was something that looked so different than anything I had ever been accustomed to, and my heartbeat grew louder by the second. My two colleagues were hyperventilating beside me. Would we be killed by the beast, or would our own lungs be overcome with weight of the horror before us, and eventually drown our young bodies of oxygen? I could tell this thing was still watching us from the woodline. It wasn't too far in the shadows. Its disgusting-looking face. I'll never forget it. I had always been filled with a sense of wonder within nature. A sense of how each species is wonderful, and ultimately deserves a place. But I knew if I had a gun, this thing would have been dead. No hesitation. This and the natural realm was no part to play together. The creature, after an hour, seemed to wander off and be gone. At least, that's when I stopped feeling watched. We would still hear weird sounds from time to time, but I almost wonder. Maybe it was hunting prey, and we gotta see it. Whatever it was. Why had we not been killed? Did it not want to come after us? To the untrained eye, this thing looked violent. Something that had been awakened in our senses. Maybe we disturbed its territory. I don't know. Anyway... After the sighting, myself and my colleagues stayed up and just huddled together around the dying embers of the fire. We cradled close by when the sun began to rise. That's when we got up, began packing our stuff. As I had my backpack on, we were exiting. I looked back one final time at the small plot we had camped on, gazing out into the greenery lit now by the morning sun. I could have sworn I saw this thing again, peering out at us, watching us leave its territory. But I knew we had crossed something, some boundary regulation, that we had somehow maybe awoken within the forest. It might sound cheesy to say an ancient forest, but again, I have never seen anything like this, nor did I know it existed. In fact, the only reason I called it a crawler is because one of my friends brought this to me once I explained what I saw. He's really into, I think you call it cryptozoology, so he knows all about this stuff, and explained to me that there's a cryptid called a crawler, and said it almost matches identical to what I saw. So I can't claim that is what I saw, but I guess it would make sense if cryptids exist. Although, to be honest, I've never really given cryptids much of a thought. Hell, I barely even know anything about Bigfoot, but that's my experience. Take it or leave it. I know what sounds like a very crazy story, but it is true. My name is Kenny, and I was at a friend's house when this happened. You see, we were in the woods near his house, and I saw something moving from behind the bushes. It looked to be like some sort of giant human-sized turtle. Now, I know that sounds nutty, 
And you're probably thinking, it's not the 80s. Ninja Turtles don't exist. But give me a second to explain. My friend lived in this huge house that had been in his family for generations. It had a ton of land. However, a whole lot of it was overgrown and full of woodland, which meant we could often play and run around for hours as kids without ever having to worry about trespassing on somebody else's property. It also meant that we could hold out parties when we were out of high school without bothering anybody or police showing up, which was awesome. It was also when we were getting ready for one of these things that it happened, as well as having the best party venue in the school. My buddy had made varsity on the football team, and his list of invites suddenly included more jocks, and more importantly, cheerleaders. So, instead of the just usual let's drink some beer in the woods, we were planning on going all out to impress the ladies, and were actually clearing some of the growth away, so they wouldn't be complaining about getting twigs and such in their hair. You know how girls can be. As I said, they owned a huge amount of land, and towards the rear of the property, near where the woods ended, but before you got to the road, was a pond. As with everything else, it had not so much been neglected, but certainly left to nature, and whilst we were happy paddling in it as kids, the stagnant-looking water and foul smell, not to mention the thought of leeches was enough to keep us away as teens. We hadn't been that far down in years, but... I just wanted to be checking it out. My parents both worked long hours and often joked there was so much land around the house that they could have people living in the woods. They'd never even know. I never really thought too much about that possibility until I heard the noises and saw something moving around in the bushes close to the water. Now, of course there were all sorts of animals that lived in these woods. We'd seen all the usual squirrels, woodchucks, birds, even a few deer now and then. But this was different. At one point, there had even been a family of feral cats, but whatever was moving about and making a very weird snuffling noise was way bigger and larger than any rabbit or duck we'd ever found before. My buddy was always the braver one, or maybe just more inclined to show it off. But rather than showing any fear... He picked up a rock and hurled it over the brush. There was a clunking sound as if the rock had connected with something hard and solid. Quickly, followed by the kind of noise that could only be translated as, ouch, that hurt. A sort of whiny squeal. That was enough to make us both grab the biggest looking sticks we could find. Just in case, whatever was over there was pissed enough to attack. Now, I could honestly say that I don't know what I was expecting. Given the size of it, but I don't think anybody could have imagined what we saw. It stood up, slowly, as if it wasn't used to being on two legs. Sort of unfurling itself almost. When it reached its full height, it looked to be about five foot tall. It was literally a giant sized turtle. Not like one of those giant turtles I once saw down in Florida, where they are actual turtles, just really big. No, this was man-shaped proportions. Let me explain. So, instead of four tiny legs and a little head that pops out of a big shell, this thing had long, ghastly arms. Legs like a person, but still a body and torso the way the shell would look, and a small little head. This thing looked exactly like you can imagine a turtle to. Small tiny eyes, a tiny nostrils, large teeth. It was gross. It opened its mouth and had all this terrible teeth. Of course, we told everybody at the party. Not exactly sure what we'd seen and didn't want them to think we'd hopped on a bus to Crazy Town. But we said that there was some sort of gross, messed up creature that must have spent years mutating down in the dirty water. Of course, you can imagine the amount of Ninja Turtle jokes we would have gotten had we told people this. We didn't see anything 
and thought it was all just a joke. We never saw this thing again, but we never forgot him. At approximately 1 a.m., At approximately 1 a.m., my friend Leza and I had just left the bar. We were walking to our cars in an adjacent parking lot, the same parking lot that people have claimed to see the Mothman. Now, I'm not normally the type of person who believes in cryptids, but there's this saying, you gotta see it to believe it. And now, I believe. Now, you'll have noted I said we were at the bar and then club. It was late, but we had only had a couple of drinks of beers as we were both driving and working the next day. So, we were by no means drunk. Some people say that you have to be in the right frame of mind for something like this, too. And maybe we were, as although I said, until that moment, I didn't actually believe. I still enjoyed hearing stories about people who thought they had seen something, and let's face it, Mothman sounded cool, so Leza and I were actually joking about it, trying to spook each other and saying, ooh, ah, each time we saw a shadow, you know, that sort of thing. It started to rain, too, but since we were on our way home rather than into the club, we weren't all that bothered. It was actually kind of refreshing. When we had arrived at the lot, it was jam-packed so we had to park quite a few ways away, and it wasn't so well lit. We were more worried about being jumped than seeing some sort of flying monster, which is why we always park together. Now, the rain was coming down in mists, and we were going to be drenched when I felt this sudden urge to pretend I'd seen something under her car. Don't ask me why, it was just one of those things that seemed funny at the time like you think you're the world's best comedian. So, I'm getting ready to make her jump, when suddenly, she stopped still in the middle of the lot, and I literally bumped into her. We were only a few feet away from the cars, and she spun around right in my face and hissed, Look! Now, since I had been just about to pull a prank on her, I naturally assumed she was trying to do the same thing to me, but being a good friend and in one of those moods, I just decided to play along. I said, ooh, what's that? A monster? I asked in giggles, of course, and she slaps me on the shoulder. A look on her face that in ten years of friendship, I had never seen. Pure fear. She wasn't messing around. She wasn't an actress. Look, she said again. But I knew she wasn't messing. As she is starting her car, I had planned to prank her only there was actual movement. As I said, it wasn't quite so lit in that part, so whatever was under her car in the shadow, you can make out something was there, and it wasn't small like a cat. There was also this weird sort of squelchy wet noise, and I knew it was raining, but it wasn't that. It was something else entirely. Now, the first thought that went through my mind was this is some kind of maniac. I mean, I was literally just joking about the Mothman. I knew that stuff was BS, but there was no way that anything under this car was something other than a skeevy human being. And in that moment, seeing the fear on Les's face made me mad. I grabbed my keys with one hand and my purse in the other and shouted, We see you! Get out of here! Maybe I thought some dude from the club was going to roll up from under there and run off. Hell, I don't know what I imagined was going to happen. I was functioning purely on adrenaline and rage. What I did not expect was the thing under the car to sort of slither out and then behind. Whatever it was, I knew that no human could move like that. Now again, I have no idea why other than the morbid curiosity, but instead of freezing in terror like Leza or running away screaming, I wanted to know what this thing was, so I grabbed my cell, flipped on the flashlight app, and ran around to the back of the car. I will do my best to describe what I saw. I see it so often in my nightmares now, I mean, I should be able to give it an accurate description, but 
despite seeing it with my own eyes and very much believing it, it's still hard for me to put out into words. The thing on the floor was like a giant snake, but unlike something like an anaconda or some terrifying yet real creature that you might find swimming through the Amazon, this one had a very distinctive difference besides being in a parking lot rather than a river. It had a human head, and I don't mean it was holding or eating a human. It had an actual human head attached to the entire snake body. No arms or legs that I could visibly see, just a long body, like a regular snake. Now, I only got a quick look, but the head looked male to me. It was bold. I couldn't make out any ears, but other than that, there were very obvious eyes. A nose and a mouth. A mouth which was wide open, displaying many teeth. And when I saw it looking at me, it kind of hissed, slithering off towards the woods to the back end lot. I think at that point, Leza and I swapped as now we stood stationary, frozen in fear, and she had snapped out of her shock and came running over to me, asking if I was okay. What I told her what I'd seen, she took one look at me and knew I was telling the truth. So much so that we both had jumped in my car and spent the night in my house, only returning to collect her car the next morning when it was light out. Thankfully, there was no sign of the thing and no damage to her car or evidence it had ever been there. We also found a new bar and club to visit to make sure to always park right near the entrance together. I will never laugh again if somebody says they've seen a UFO or Bigfoot or whatever. If I have seen an actual snakeman, then I guess anything is possible. What do you think I saw? Was this a real-life reptilian encounter? Or what? I'll tell you a secret. I'm not sure how long I can keep this up. So many people need me, and... They don't know that the other things are out there. If one gets into your house at night, while you're sleeping, what then? If I had been more careful, we might not be in this situation. I would better start from the beginning. Although, for obvious reasons, I can't tell you too much about who I really am. But I am part of a search and rescue team specializing in national parks and forests. You wouldn't believe how many people will go missing or need help on a daily basis. I cover a huge expansive area in Southern California. That's as much as it is safe to tell you. The first thing I'll tell you is that not everybody goes missing should be found. Now, that sounds awful for someone who literally works in the field of rescuing people. So, let me explain. Sometimes, not all the time, thank God... But sometimes, things happen to people whilst they're out, waiting to be found. And what they see, do, go through in order to survive, changes them. You've all heard of the infamous Donner Party, right? The movie Alive? It happens way more than you think. You have a party of even just two people. They both get into danger. One dies, and the other is trapped or badly injured. And they just have to wait. Starvation can drive you slowly mad and all of a sudden, your buddy who is no longer around to care could be your sole chance at surviving. But something changes if you have had to reach that point. The indigenous people even have had a creature so terrifying, they don't like to speak of it. The Wendigo, who was once a human, who succumbed to evil, and part of that is cannibalism. I think something like that is what happens to just a handful of these people. The people that we don't find and assume they've been drug off by bears or cougars or something. Although, I don't know exactly what happens to them or how or why they survive, but they are no longer human and they don't want to be found. We had this horrible situation a few years ago where mom, dad, and teen son went missing. They were young, fit, and healthy. They should not have had a single reason for them to have disappeared off the planned route. But when they didn't report back to base, 
we went looking. Well, it took a week to find them. The dad had died first. It looked like a head trauma. The son had two broken legs and had died shortly thereafter. There was no sign of the mom, although there were traces of her blood at the scene. To start with, it looked like the pair had been mauled by animals, possibly coyotes or scavengers. But when the M.E. looked closely, yeah, you got it. Human bite marks, and they matched it to the mom's dental records. We never found her. Not a trace except for the blood of the scene suggesting she too was injured. But it looked like she had consumed enough of her husband and son to stay alive. That was the only incident I had actually been to. But I have heard plenty of similar stories over the years. And then, around six months ago, I came across something. It won't surprise you to learn that as well as working for SNR, I am passionate about nature and wildlife. I've been writing sort of a memoir for the last couple of years, specifically documenting all the different species of animals, insects, birds, anything really that I come across. I've been tracking this beautiful stag and really wanted to see it, if it would lead me to her herd or family, just so I could record it. It had not been bothered by my presence the entire time, seeming to accept that I meant it no harm and was just interested. It seemed to be headed towards a cave system, and I realized just how far off the trail I had ventured, but I was confident in finding my way back. I also had not realized it was getting so late. That can happen sometimes when I get really caught up in something. Something seemed to catch the attention of the stag, and all of a sudden, it shot off, racing through the trees and away from the caverns as if its life depended on it. That should have been all the warning I needed. But of course, I wanted to know what was in that cave that had freaked out this large, majestic creature. Even when I heard the growl at first, I didn't run. Intrigue overpowering fear and natural instinct to get out of there. It didn't sound like a bear or a cougar, or to be honest, any kind of animal I'd heard before. It sounded almost human. And then I saw it. She, I should say. She was barely recognizable, but I'd stared at her photo for many hours over the years, wondering what had become of her. There seemed to be very little of her left. She now resembled more like how cave people were represented in museums. Filthy, naked, and it looked as if she'd gotten used to being bent over or crouched in the cave as her spine was warped. And finding her still alive was the most shocking part. Standing next to her, equally as naked and covered in mud and blood, was a child, probably around two years old. She went missing over three years ago and was not pregnant. You can bet that I ran, and I was scared for my life. I took the wrong path to start with, hitting a dead end, almost immediately, where yet another cave mouth opened. I didn't dare hang about, but just for a moment, my eye caught something glinting in what was left of the sunshine. I saw a license plate on the ground, along with various bits of clothing and some bones. As I turned and fled, thankfully hitting the right trail that time, I couldn't stop thinking about the plate how they could have only encountered a car if they ventured further into the park and onto the woods. What I should have done was reported it. I should have gotten the police and headed back and let them deal with those. Well, they weren't people anymore. But I didn't. Instead, I head out where whenever I can keep watch. If I see any movement, I fire my gun to warn them. But I'm just one person. I can't be there all the time. Why do I do this? Well, why don't I tell? I don't know. If someone else gets hurt, I'll be to blame. I just don't know what to do. Or know how many others there are in those hundreds of caves and tunnels. 